Fans, welcome to Ray Kinsland Stadium on the campus of Cherokee High School up here on Big Cove Road as we're getting ready for a great Friday night Swain County showdown. Hi, everybody. Gary Ayers along with Coach Rod White. Toby Burrell is here. Joe Holt is here. And the whole Maroon Devil Network crew on a warm, muggy Friday night just when we thought the weather was going to get cooler. Well, today, hey, temperatures in the 80s came back, and we're ready for Friday night football as we're looking out toward the uh, Kona Lefty River and, of course, the uh, – uh, Grand Stadium, that is one of the best in anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee. And that's Ray Kinslin Stadium, home of the Braves here at Cherokee High School. Our Maroon Devils, of course, coming off a last-second win. It was a fantastic win last week over Hayesville. We blocked an extra point, and we got the job done, winning by one. Meanwhile, the Cherokee Braves had a blowout game last week as they took care of the Carolina Sports Academy 57 to nothing. So uh, they had a cruising win last week. Choir Maroon Devils really, really had a tough contest with the Yellow Jackets of Hayesville. But, Coach, coming in tonight, hey, you can't go by what happened last week, as you know. We've had a week to hopefully get better, correct some things, but so have the Cherokee Braves as they're coming in with a couple of losses this year. They lost their season opener to North Buckham, 24-21, to and they also lost to, to Smoky Mountain earlier in the season as well. But uh, they're the defending state 1A champs, and until somebody knocks them off, they're still the defending 1A state champs, and we've got to recognize that, don't we? Yeah, t until they get beat uh, uh, in the playoffs, if it goes that far for them, or until there's a uh, – uh, if they make it all the way into the championship game again – yeah, they're they're the they're the state champions until a new one is crowned. But like you were saying earlier, this is a Smoky Mountain Conference, and yes. so all bets are off. <laughs> Anything can happen, as we know. Uh, anytime you suit up, as we saw just a couple of weeks ago, uh, of course, a big showdown between Robbinsville and Murphy that uh, uh, had a lot of implications in conference play. Besides our game tonight, coming up another conference play. It's going to be Andrews at Murphy, and that's of course a uh, uh, big showdown. As uh, last week, a 19 point loss. To Rosman uh, didn't do a whole lot for uh, Andrews with Murphy, uh, but uh, the Andrews Wildcats trying to trying to keep their feet on the ground and get things done. Also, another conference game tonight: Rosman playing at Robbinsville, and uh, mistakes really cost Robbinsville in their conference opener against Murphy, giving up four turnovers in the 13-point loss. And coach, we've talked about turnovers so many times that uh, uh, every time you have one turnover. Your chances of winning go down. You start having two, three, and four. Your chances of winning go really, really down. So you got to hang on to the football, and that's going to be a big key, I think, here tonight. You know, it, it is for any time you're in a ball game of this magnitude. You can get away with it when, when you're playing against uh, lesser opponents. But right. but when if everything else is even out there on that field, you start you start turning the ball over, mishandling the ball, and sometimes you don't even have to turn it over. Just just mishandling it at the line of scrimmage, you use, you lose downs, and it puts you in very very poor field position. And uh, uh, interceptions, big part of the game, in, you know, as many, many times as everybody's trying to throw the football now. So uh, hanging on to the football, securing it, uh, sustaining drives, even if you score or not, but, but changing field position, it's huge. It really is. And talking about uh, another key coming into this ball game here tonight, we're looking, of course, if we look back to last year, we don't like to because Cherokee came to town and kind of manhandled us at uh, Swain County Memorial Stadium. But this is a different year. We're playing here at Cherokee. A uh, key in the game, two new quarterbacks. Of course, uh, Ty Mintz went on down. He's playing down at Kennesaw State. They're nationally ranked in 1AA football. Of course, uh, Amaroon Devils with a new quarterback as well. Damian Lossie is on the scene while Cherokee is turning to Bobby Crow. So two new quarterbacks that I think have had a lot of on-the-job training, Coach, this year because they haven't started until this year. And that's a key, I think, for both teams here tonight is the play of their respective quarterbacks. Yeah, it, 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 it goes right back to what we were talking about, handling the football, taking care of yeah. the football, knowing what you can do and can't do. Uh, I haven't seen Cherokee all that much, just been reading about them a whole lot. Uh, the things that you read about with with, uh, with uh, Mr. Crow is is that he he handles the football very well. Yes. And uh, and watching our quarterback, he's done a great job here recently of doing everything he can to try to try to win a football game. And uh, sometimes he's going to take chances, but you, you've about got to have that at this 
this point in time. You really do. Uh, anytime you're starting a sophomore quarterback like Damian, he's uh, he's coming in uh, totally fresh, uh, but he's getting better week by week from what we have seen on the football field, and that's really the litmus test is what you're going to be doing on Friday night. And uh, we saw him do some good things last week. Uh, he likes to run the football. He's very good at it. Of course, Bryce Sane in the backfield runs the football very well. Also, as Bryce coming in, 477 yards on 90 carries. Seven touchdowns, but on the other side of the ball, the Cherokee Braves with a good running back as well. Big kid, Isaiah Evans, 210-pound senior, six touchdowns, 511 yards. So we've got the quickness with Bryce Sane, and Cherokee's got the power in their backfield with the big Isaiah Evans. Yeah, I've been keep, uh, reading about the Evans uh, player, he uh, watching uh, his stats increase week by week, and <laughs> yeah. the things he's been doing. Uh, you know, he's been putting on a show. He's going, he's who they're going to depend on with this running game, 100. percent We know that quarterback's going to run with it some. We know that, but uh, uh, they're going to make sure that the ball gets in his hands and that uh, uh, he, he tries to make something happen uh, for his team. You know, one guy I looked at uh, down there a minute ago as the teams are warming up, of course, we're uh, all familiar with Coach Kent Briggs, a, a super fine guy doing a great job here, uh, formerly at Western Carolina University. But uh, but an old friend down there, and he had on a gold jersey. I wanted to go down and talk to him about switching colors, and that's uh, John Mitchell. Of course, John was uh, such a great running back at Swain County High School. He's in our Athletic Hall of Fame, and uh, he's just uh, he's just a uh, a fine guy, any way you look at it. And I hate to see him on the other side, but hey, that happens too. Yeah, Johnny Buck's <laughs> been a been a fixture with them here since I think since Coach Briggs got here. Yeah, maybe even yeah. a little bit before. And uh, uh, <laughs> he likes it up here. He, he likes uh, uh, being around these players up here. And, and Johnny could fit in anywhere. He we could. all know him, he and could. he he yeah. could coach just about anywhere. But I think he's found himself up here, and and he's found his responsibility for this team. And uh, he was he was a great player at Swain County High School back in the day, as we all know. Fans, stay tuned. We've got. More more coming up, but right now we're going to take a two-minute timeout, so stay with us as we'll return in two minutes here on the Maroon Devils Network. Fans, welcome back on this Friday night as the Cherokee Brave High School Marching Band just finished up with the National Anthem as the sun is going down. We're joined by the, the assistant coaches, of course, here in the booth. And by the way, if you're wondering why do things sound a little bit weird up there tonight, well, it's because we're in a booth where the windows don't open. At Swain County High School, of course, our windows open. We have the sound of the crowd, the sound of the players, the sound of the game. I mean, it's just uh, so if you uh, wonder why we're sounding a little bit strange here tonight, there are no windows open. We're in a uh, kind of a soundproof booth almost here at Cherokee High School. And, Coach, I tell you, it just it – just Feels a little strange not being out there where you can hear what's going on. Yeah, I, it feels a little bit like prison when you when you <laughs> they won't let you open the windows. But you no, know, the windows don't open, so we won't be able to hear a whole lot. But yeah, it'd be just like watching you on a big screen TV, pretty much from up here. It really is. We can uh, depend on Joe Holt, of course, running the camera here tonight. And talking about the camera, I know Emma Dingle had a chance to sit down and talk some Maroon Devil football with head coach Neil Blankenship earlier this week. So let's see what Emma and Neil had to talk about here on the Maroon Devils Network. Hello, Maroon Nation. This is Emma Dingle for the Maroon Devils Network. I'm here with head football coach Neil Blinkenship. Coach, our Devils emerged victorious after a very tight contest with the Yellow Jackets last week with a blocked extra point at tip giving the Devils a one-point lead at the end of the fourth quarter. Can you tell us your thoughts about the close game? Well, I, I'm, as we're fortunate to win it. Uh, you know, I thought Hazel uh, outplayed us in a lot of ways. We had too many penalties, I thought, that uh, cost us field position. Uh, we we uh, had some bobble, we had some bobble snaps and, and some miscues there with that. And I just thought they outplayed us. And uh, I didn't think our defense tackled real well either. So, you know, I, we were real fortunate to get out with a win. Uh, I hope it was a lesson learned by our team that, you know, you got to prepare for everybody. Because, I, like I said, I thought they were the better football team that night. And we were just fortunate enough to get a win. I'll take a win. But, you know, I hope our kids learned a lesson on that win. And, uh, and we've had a better week of practice so far, so I'm hoping that's starting to sink in with them how important practice is. This week we will travel to Cherokee to face the state champions, the Cherokee Braves. What can we expect from the Braves on Friday? Well, the Braves are extremely athletic. Uh, their, their quarterback is a, a good quarterback, throws the ball well. They have an outstanding running back, uh, and, and he runs the ball extremely hard. He's, he's hard to tackle. Uh, he's being recruited, you know, by colleges and stuff, so he's, he's a good running back. Uh, they've got great receivers. They have two, two of the best receivers in the conference that they're going to get the ball to, and they can go the distance at any time. Up front, they, they're good up front. 
Uh, so it's going to be a tough test up there, and it's always tough to play up there. It's a rival game, so those games are always fun. So uh, I'm excited about it. We've had a great week of practice and uh, looking forward to the game. Thank you, Coach, and good luck. This is Emma Dingle reporting for the Maroon Devils Network. And now, back to the pregame show. Fans, welcome back, and thanks to Emma Dingle and Coach uh, Coach B, as everybody likes to call him, Neil Blankenship, as he's coming in, of course, uh, up here to the Cherokee Brave Ray Kinsland Stadium. And, and Coach, talking about Ray Kinsland, talking with some friends here at Cherokee before the game, uh, we want to send our thoughts and prayers and concerns out for one of the one of the best guys I've ever been around, and that's Mr. Ray Kinsland, who has done PA here at Cherokee High School for more years, I think, than maybe I've been alive. I mean, he's just been an outstanding contributor and member of the Cherokee Nation here, and we just uh, hope and pray he gets better. He's having a tough time right now with with his health. Yeah, Ray's been a friend to, to the Swain County program uh, for as long as I can remember. From yes. when I came in 1979, he was one of the first people you met, although his connections mostly were with, with the tribal schools up here. Right. He still had a connection with us uh, simply because he did so many things for uh, our program, if you needed buses uh, and, and things of that nature, and he was always looking out for our program as well as this one. And uh, you, you couldn't find a better, better fellow who enjoyed and appreciated high school athletics. Absolutely. And I know he had relatives that also attended Swain County Schools, as he did here in Cherokee. And you're right. Of course, he, he kind of ran the Cherokee Boys Club for so many years and has just been such a – uh, a figure for the entire Swain County uh, area, both on and off the reservation. And anybody who has known him, uh, I think, thinks the world of him. I know back in the old days at the old stadium, he was there every Friday night uh, at home games doing PA, and you, you just miss that presence. Yeah, that voice of his, yeah. you can't replace that. You really can't. You're right. uh, you can try, but you just can't replace it because he had that steady – a voice coming over that uh, public address system, and and everybody knew who it was. There was no doubt. And uh, but uh, I always enjoyed sitting down and talking with him when you got an opportunity. I anytime you came to do any type of business with him, he he wanted to take you to lunch or something of that nature. And it was just as much fun to sit and listen listen to Ray tell tales and oh, yeah. uh, and and <laughs> yeah, asking questions about his uh, his business ventures and things. And he could tell you some of the craziest stories about. And you knew they had to be true because you could just see it happening to him right he's uh, again uh, just an outstanding person and and uh, our very best going out to mr ray kinsland uh, one of a kind truly fans stay tuned we'll come back and talk more about tonight's swain county championship we like to call it that for so many years between our maroon devils and of course the hometown cherokee braves we'll be back in two minutes right here on the maroon devils network Fans, welcome back here on this Friday night. Uh, one thing we want to pass along to our fans that came down from the North Carolina High School Athletic Association this week, coaches, you probably saw this as well due to the uh, Hurricane Florence that caused damage down in the eastern part of the state. Uh, the uh, North Carolina High School Athletic Association Board of Directors has approved some changes. And basically, one week after the regular season here in high school football, there will be an open date especially for the teams here in the Western North Carolina Mountain area. Uh, the last regular season play date will be November 9. Uh, seeding for the playoffs will take place on Saturday, November 10. That's changed from November 3rd. And then the first round of the state playoffs will begin November 16 and will play all the way out to the state championships December 14 and 15. So, Coach, uh, we might uh, we might even have a week off between our last regular game and the playoffs. Yeah, and, and I see a lot of those uh, – T uh, teams down in that part of the area that was the beginning of their conference schedule and some of them were already a game into it so they have to play these games to determine to determine championships and and one loss records so it's a big deal and it, it, it's a good thing that they did that i'm glad they took their time and didn't do anything rash to begin with and they just made it they made a judgment call on it and i think it's a good one they, it, it's a it'll work out good for everybody that way i, th I think you're right uh, that'll give a lot of teams up here in the mountains who didn't suffer any any damage from Hurricane Florence, a chance to uh, uh, heal up a little bit maybe before the first week of the playoffs. And then, of course, uh, we'll get ready to go the following week. But the teams down east, of course, they, they did struggle with some uh, damage to many facilities down there, and they're still struggling to try to recover from Hurricane Florence. So hopefully they'll be ready to go uh, one uh, two weeks, actually, following the final regular season game. But, Coach, it's hard to look that far down the road because as a coach, the only game you're concerned about is this one right here. Yeah, and it, it, 
you know, our hats, my heart goes out to those folks down there. Yes. Uh, being down in that part of the country a little bit, visiting uh, off and on down around Jones County, and then seeing that place underwater like that down there. But, like you said, uh, our concentration's got to be on what's going on up here in the mountains. Oh, no doubt about it. Of course, uh, our Maroon Devils coming in. I know one guy who's not going to be playing tonight. He hasn't played a whole lot, number 81, Brandon Salinas. He was on crutches when we saw him come into the stadium tonight. So, everybody else, it looks like pretty much healthy and ready to go. So, Coach, I think uh, – uh, we're ready to go. I know Cherokee will be. Uh, they they look at this game as, as a huge rivalry, as do we, because there are so many players who have relatives that kind of go both ways. I mean, we've got a lot of folks on our team from the reservation. Obviously, Cherokee does. So there are a lot of connections between Swain and Cherokee high schools. There always have been, and, <laughs> and there's always that rivalry. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I remember a time and date where people's jobs got threatened. Uh, by where their kids went to school, oh, yeah. uh, where they either went to the reservation school here or they attended uh, our school system, in Swan the regular part of the public school system in Swain County. So, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, good feelings. A lot of people are proud of both sides, and then there's a lot of ill feelings. And oh, yeah. That, that's always existed. <laughs> I, I, I don't think – so I've re we talked about this several times with the uh, coaches over the past, but uh, uh, some of the big games we've been in with Cherokee, I know the, that uh, you know that you spend a whole week in getting phone calls from people, and some good and some bad, and you never knew what was going to be said over that phone. But uh, uh, yeah, it get especially if both teams were pretty good. Oh, no question. I remember back in the days when Scooter McCoy was the head coach here and also the late uh, Mutt de Graffin Reed was the head coach here. We really had some headbanging games, and it goes all the way back even to when uh, uh, Bob Marr was head coach up here with Bob Henry. Uh, yeah. We've we've had some knockdown drag out contests. Yeah, it's, it's always been interesting, uh, no matter where the programs are, because uh, um, it, it seems like that uh, – if you win, the, whoever wins this football game, it's not only bragging rights. You can hang your hat on that uh, for for the rest of the season, the rest of the year. Yes. And then, because uh, I'm sure that's exactly the way Cherokee has felt about it. That game against us last year, when they took it over from the halftime and and proceeded to beat us up all the way through the state championship, they were probably they're probably proud of both those games. But ours ranks right up there with the uh, with that state championship. Oh, no doubt about it. Last year was a 45 to seven win for the Braves. As you mentioned, they came out and returned that kickoff uh, for a touchdown in the second half. Then they hit a couple of big uh, uh, passes deep on our secondary, and and they really had that big play in the second half that turned that game around. Now, of course, uh, Ty Metz, one of the orchestrators of the big play offense that they uh, threw at us last year, is gone. Now his little brother is still here, though, and he's one of the best receivers in the mountains, Cade Metz, coach. So, obviously, our secondary is going to be tested with, with his ability tonight. Yeah, he, he has as much athletic ability, I think, as his brother had. Now, I don't think he's got the size. Right. And uh, and he doesn't have the experience yet, but he, he is as athletic as his brother was. He really is. He's a good receiver, uh, uh, just a good player all the way around. Now, you look at some of the size up front. The Braves are blessed with some size. Some of their linemen up front, just to give you some size ideas, 6'2", 255, 6 feet 250, 5'10", 270 pounds, 6 feet 290, and 5'9", 270. And that's something that uh, – uh, Cherokee has really never had a problem with in their linemen. They've always had uh, a good size with their linemen, and they've always had quick, uh, skill people. And that's been going on for as long as I can remember. Yeah, it's it's always that battle of, of uh, uh, up front in the trenches that decides this football game. Uh, really, no matter what kind of team uh, you, you bring up here, you could be very athletic. But if you don't win the line of scrimmage, uh, you're in for a long night. Hey, that's what it's all about. And, and we're going we're gonna to see which team can dominate that line of scrimmage here tonight as we're getting closer to kickoff. Keep it right here. We're going to take one more break. This two-minute timeout down the line. Then we'll come back and get kickoff underway here on a beautiful Friday night. Stay tuned. We'll be back in two minutes here on the Maroon Devils Network. Fans, welcome back. Friday night football is alive and well here at uh, Ray Kinsland Stadium. Again, on the uh, Cherokee Braves campus, as we're seeing the captains down there with a toss of the coin, all the Cherokee students down there with their tunnel, the Maroon Devil students down there with their tunnel for their players to run through. And Coach, that's always a good feeling, and I know those those players like that. They like that attention, and that gets them jacked up, doesn't it? Well, it's any time that you can support, as these young men come out there, uh, you know, it, it's uh, the adrenaline's pumping. Yeah. Uh, they've already been out there warming up. They're, they've been sweating. 
Uh, they're ready to get on with this thing and just seeing some seeing fan support is what it's all about. Talking about that, we want to say thank you to Farley Insurance with Michael Watson. Doing a good job, of course, naming the Maroon Devils Player of the Week. And what a player it was, uh, Charlie Lambert. Kind of saved the day, Coach. You, you hate to look at one play as being a big play, but if there was, that was a big play when he blocked the extra point that was the difference in that win over Hayesville. Yeah, he just he, as he, he, he stated in the newspaper, he just saw a gap, took it, and got airborne and uh, blocked the thing. So, I mean, it's, and that's as simple as the game is. Sometimes it's just it's just that simple. You see something, you react to it, and and I'm sure he he looks back on it now, and it was pretty much a reaction more than it was something that he had spent a long time thinking about. Outstanding work because who knows what could happen if they had hit the extra point. We might have been going to overtime, and who knows what could happen when you get into overtime. Sometimes the team with the momentum can strike quickly and uh, make it a bad night for you. Yeah, I always hated overtime. But, I mean, we got into a lot of overtime games during my uh, my little tenure there at, uh, over the 30 years there at Swain County. <laughs> but we, we got in some big ones, and we won some and we lost some. And uh, uh, But we got into some big overtime games, and, and uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was a battle of wheels when it came down to those overtime. It really is because, you know, as uh, in all 1A schools, you have so many players like we do, like we have eight players that play both ways. And you start getting down into the fourth quarter in overtime, no matter what condition you're in, you're getting you're getting worn down. Oh yeah, and, and it used to be that if it's a non-conference game, you could make the decision before uh, the game between head coaches whether or not you were going to play it off. And I'll never forget my first head coaching ball game, uh, Boris Dietz on the other side of the field <laughs> there at right. Smoky Mountain, and he came out there and he said <laughs> something that it was really good because I I'd already made up my mind I did, I didn't want to uh, uh, to uh, I wanted overtime if we were going to go into it, and he said. Look, this is my first game back at Smoky Mountain. This is the first one right here with you. If this thing ends up tied, it would probably be better for both of us in the long run if we just took it. And that's the only tie I was ever involved in. The first, <laughs> the first ball game as a head coach against Boyce. <laughs> I remember that well, and and uh, yeah, that that was probably the way to go, coach. Yeah, it was. He, he when we started talking about it, <laughs> it, he made a lot of sense. Here we go. We're kicking it off as Cade Mintz is back deep, and he's going to be picking it up at the 13 yard line, out to the 15, 20, 25, out across the 30, breaking a tackle, cutting it outside. He has some speed. He cuts inside at the 40, all the way to the 42 yard line, and there is the athleticism we were talking about of Cade Mintz of Cherokee High School coach, and he has already turned the opening kickoff into a big play. Yeah, he got he picked up 20 yards there pretty much on his own, and, and we didn't do a good job at the point of attack of tackling him there. We've got to do a better job tonight of tackling if, if we don't. Yes. Uh, players like Mintz and the running back and the quarterback back there, they're going to give us fits. Oh, no question. Cherokee coming out first down and 10 now. Great field position at the 43-yard line. More about that tackling in a minute. I've got some other <laughs> ideas to share with you. Maroon Devils, four-man front right now. Got two linebackers sitting right behind us, and they hand off to Mintz around the left side. He is a running back around that left side. And, Coach, I talked with two other coaches this week because I saw it last week at the college level. There are so many arm tackles. Mm -hmm. But do these two coaches tell me, and, and tell me what you think, with these spread offenses, we don't have gang tackling as much as we used to, so you've got so many one-on-one -on -one situations with arm tackling. Yeah, and, so. and a lot of times, is it, just like that play right there, uh, it, it's a matter of getting to the point of attack. Right then I saw us probably get off blocks better, and I've seen us do it all year long. And that's going to be key to this whole thing right there. Oh, good, there's man. a big yeah. play coming in there as big Charlie Lambert, our player of the no. week, and he's coming in strong here tonight. I hope they don't call Cherokee that a, for a loss. face mask. That official on that far sideline threw a flag just immediately when he made that tackle. Uh-oh. And I'm afraid that's that may be – Let's see, it may be holding on the edge here. He picked it back up really quick. Let's hope they uh, wave it off it's, if it's against our defense. But the Cherokee Braves are walking backwards. Yeah, That's, it it uh, looked like a clean tackle from here. It did. Uh, he, he, he did a good job reading it. Um, and so far on these two plays, we're doing a better job at the line of scrimmage. I hope it stays that way of defeating blocks and taking advantage of what they're giving us right there because they're, they're trying to string this wide side of the field with these receivers out here. And we did a good job of adjusting to motion both times in the secondary by rotating over. And talking and, about motion, that penalty, a false start against Cherokee, so they back up five. So all of a sudden they're looking at third down and 11 after a good first down. Right. So now we'll see. Uh, here again they put the – there are two wide receivers out here. Nobody's probably going to motion this time. 
And this time the quarterback Crow is looking to the right side, rolling, rolling, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield. Outstanding play again, coming in there with a huge tackle. That looked like big Jacob Langston. It sure did, and uh, Jacob did something at the line of scrimmage right then that if he'll continue to do all night long is before he took off, he, he made sure of what he, he was seeing, and that was good contain because uh, last week he had a hard time with that against Hazel. They kept getting to the edge on him, and uh, I think he did a, a much, much better job then of picking in his point of attack. Now Cherokee is going to have to punt on fourth down and about 25 yards. Dropping back is going to be our Bryce Saint. Uh, Mintz is going to be back to punt, and we've got a whistle, and we're going to have a timeout called by the Cherokee Braves here. They're not sure about uh, uh, what they're going to be doing here on fourth down, but uh, you've got to think they're going to punt it away, but apparently they did not have the right folks on the field. Now they only had 10 players on the field. They were having a little bit of personnel problems right there, and uh, so – I'm sure that they'll take – you got to about take a timeout right there because you don't want to put yourself in any more of a deficit. And, and I know Coach Briggs didn't really want to take that timeout, but uh, you don't want 10 out there playing against 11 if you can help it. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. This early in the game, when that momentum can just turn on a dime sometimes, as Mintz will back – uh, drop back into punt formation now with 10.32 to play. We're in the first quarter. Just underway as it's starting to get just a little dark here. We're up on Big Cove Road, as you know, where Cherokee High School is located. A beautiful campus here. Bryce Sane will sit back just inside Maroon Devil territory. Mintz getting the snap. Kicks it high. Big, deep punt. This one's going to... Going to go over the head of Mintz, and we'll take a small Cherokee roll, and we'll be blown dead at the 23-yard line where we'll have it first down and 10. So pretty good punt there by Ty Mintz. Yeah, Bryce needs to be a little bit deeper, and he realized it after the ball was hit, but he did a pretty smart thing. You never want to see the ball hit the ground and roll that much on a on a, on a a good deep punt like that. You want a chance to return it, but you don't want to be running backwards trying to catch that thing either. And If you can come up on it and settle, then that's one thing, but he booted it over his head, so. He'll back up the next time. He'll try to keep it in front of him. Here we go. First down and 10. The Maroon Devils first time with a football this time. Wide to the right side. It's going to be Jacob Langston. Got twins over here on the left side. And this time in the shotgun. It's going to be our quarterback, of course, Damian Lossie. And it's going to be Bryce right beside him. Damian's going to run to the left side. Good, good seam over here at the 27-yard line. A pickup of almost five yards. I like it. I like what we're doing with him. This is his kind of game. Now, I don't know how this thing's going to turn out tonight, but I'm telling you, you know, he's good up under. He is good up under. Don't get me wrong. But he's more of a threat when he's got a chance to see that. And you can pull a lineman and put them out in front of him and let him make one or two cuts at the first level and at the second level, and he's going to make things happen. That's what we saw on that play. This time we run the Twins over to the wide side of the field. We're lined up at the 28-yard line. Same set. This time he's going to fake the handoff and run it again. And But, uh, yep, that's Damian Lossie again. Mm -hmm. Very close to a first down at the 31-yard line. We need two more, a third down and two. Coming up. Now, this is an option play, and, and a lot of people need to know this out there because we talked about this last week. He is actually reading defensive linemen when he ties up with that with the running back, when he ties up with Bryce. He's watching and he's waiting to see what those defensive linemen and linebackers are going to be doing in the process. And we got an injured player, Connor McCoy, has helped off the field. He's not even putting hardly any weight on his leg there. Uh, our certified athletic trainer, Kerry Powell, over there to work on him. But, boy, Connor didn't look good at all. We hope he's okay, but uh, he's in some pain over there on the sideline right now. Yeah, it looks like it may be an ankle, and two of our players just carried him completely off the field. So it looks like uh, our Maroon Devil is going to line up now without him third down and two. And uh, now we're getting everybody set. Got a man in motion. That's going to be Ian Brooks. He lines up. And we've got some people moving around, Coach. They were not quite on the same page on that play. No, we, uh, Ian took a little bit of an early jump up into the <laughs> yeah. line of scrimmage right there. So, uh, And that was great. It was good right there to get up underneath the center in short yardage situations like that. You don't want to be back there in that gun and something happened with that with the snap or whatever. Just get him on up underneath there, Coach Moore. Uh, uh, figuring it out right here. They it put him up under, and, and they were going to run some kind of lead play there like we saw on the goal line last week. By the way, our new lineman coming in in the place of Connor McCoy is going to be Charlie Lambert. Again, our uh, uh, player of the week this week, named by Michael Watson at Farley Insurance. Here we go. Now we got third down and almost eight. Got a man in motion. Bryce Sane's going to get it on the jet sweep. Tries to turn the corner and does. Out across the 30. There's a penalty flag down. Maybe a holding call. He's... Just shy, Coach, I believe, of the first down. But, wow, it turned out to be a pretty good play. Yeah, and nobody has the mark of where it ball ended up in case. But it's going to call holding. So. 
Yeah, it's going to back us up, so we're going to have to run third down again. We were just a yard short. They spotted it mm -hmm. about the 32. We only needed one more yard, but now we're going to back up near the, uh, wow, back inside the 20-yard line. All the way back at the, well, they're finally going to spot it at the 18. Third down and about 15 coming up. So, again, but a good jet sweep and had it going over here to the left side. Mixing it up pretty good right now. Yeah. It, it, there's nothing wrong with what we're doing. We just, uh, we're not the kind of offense that can overcome a whole heck of a lot of penalties. So we may see some veer game right here and, yep. uh, and then punt the football. That's what we did, Coach. Uh, tried to run it to that right side over there with Ian for a couple of yards. And we're going to punt it now on fourth down and about 13. But you're right. Two big penalties on that drive really hurt us. Yeah, and, you know, you, you don't you hate to see that uh, wagon wheel start turning because it, sometimes that can be epidemic, just like turnovers. But maybe it won't. Maybe that was just the first series of uh, uh, jitters. So That's we'll it. see. Both teams had some penalties on their first series. This punt is going to be going out of bounds right over the head of head coach uh, Briggs down there. That's Thomas Allen punting it away. And now Cherokee is going to have it, though, in very good field position at the 40 five-yard line of Maroon Devil Territory. Yeah, and you, you notice the field position just moved right on down across the 50 in these two exchanges of, of uh, offensive series here. So hopefully we can make some big uh, defensive stands right here and either force them to punt the football or turn it over on downs now. So now Cherokee with their second offensive series, 8-12 to play in the first quarter here on a partly cloudy Friday night. We're going to be on the road again next week. No check that. Yeah, we're going to be on the road next week at Andrews if you're looking ahead on the road over there. And uh, we got uh, the tight end moving on this side. Moving a little bit early over there for the Braves is going to be 32. Sterling Santa Maria jumping a little bit. Yeah, he got a little early jump just like Ian did on our, our uh, first possession. So we'll uh, back them up and get it more out to, to midfield right here and, and uh, see if we can't keep them down here. You know, Coach, uh, uh, you know these players are jacked up, ready to go in this game just because it's Swain and Cherokee. Oh, yeah, and they're, <laughs> they're not listening to a snap count very well, and they're uh, they're struggling a little bit with that in their head. So. Yep, got a lot of adrenaline pumping. This time it's going to be Mintz in motion. He blocks. They run to the right side, and uh, running hard out of the backfield, out of the 44-yard line is the big guy we were talking about, Isaiah Evans, their 210-pound senior. And just the way he runs, Coach, he, he runs with a lot of a lot of arms and legs and runs uh, runs hard. Yeah, they, they ran a wing T play out of that, pulling both guards, uh, one to kick out and one to lead up in. Uh, and uh, good play. they ran that play a lot last year. That was their favorite offensive running play out in the middle of the field uh, during the course of the game last year. This time they're going to have three wide, two on the wide side of the field, one down here on the short side as Crow is going to be in the shotgun again. Turns and hands off. Evans left side, got those guards out in front of him again, and he rumbles down to the 40-yard line, which is going to bring up a third down and five. So, again, they like to pull those guards and lead Evans around, don't they? Yeah, and this time they pulled the tackle from the backside, and I think it has to do with, with what gap has to be protected. They don't want to pull him if somebody is ahead up him because he can then uh, give chase behind the, behind the blocker. So uh, uh, the tackle by, actually lined up a little deeper so he could get out yeah, on that, that was, particular play. You're right. That was big 72, Isaiah Armour chain, 5'10", 270 pounds, leading the way. This time they fake the jet sweep. Crow back to throw, sets it oh, up, time yeah. it's in the middle, and he's got all kinds of room down to the 20, down to the 15, down to the 10. And unless he stepped out of bounds, uh, he did step out of bounds at the two-yard line. But, uh, Coach, that was a well-disguised play that faked the jet sweep and then found him on the screen. Ran the screen underneath, just a regular uh, screen, old-school style, right over the middle, get the back settled down and right in behind those linemen, turn those off, those defensive linemen loose, and then just get upfield and block level two and level three, and they did a great job of it. They really did. Uh, Mintz uh, had some, some good running room. Now it's first down and goal to go from the two-yard line. 6.46 right. to play. Uh, they line him up in the eye. And we got a penalty flag down. Evans tried to jump over the top, but the flag may back him up. Yeah, I, I think it's on them. They either lined up offsides um, uh, prior to the snap or somebody moved just as it was snapped. But uh, they got in the power eye, got their offensive line splits foot to foot, packed everybody down in there with one split receiver out there and just tried to hammer it up in there and let him dive over. Now they're going to bring two wide receivers in and probably spread it out a little more. Let's see what they do now. On second down, they're going to spot it at the six-yard line. And uh, so it's going to bring up a second down and go from the – 
from the six-yard line. And Coach, that's something you don't see as much anymore is the power eye formation. Yeah, you don't see it a whole lot. But uh, uh, the, you, these spread offenses, they have to have something that when they get it down there close and, they, and it's going to be tough yards and they know it is that, that they can pack people in there and, and get some power up in the middle. Boy, this time they spread them out. Four wide receivers. Crow is going to – no, he hands it off to Mintz, and Mintz tries to run the right side. Kind of a wildcat formation, and he breaks enough tackles, Coach, and he finally makes it in the end zone. We stacked him up, but we didn't wrap him up. No, we hit him at the five-yard line. Yeah. And he literally carried us into the end zone. It was a wildcat set. They snapped it directly to him so that the ball wouldn't have to be handed off, and uh, he just took it and cut it straight up in there and, and uh, drove right through us. Well, they have some fireworks going on literally as they uh, shoot some fireworks up before the extra point. And now coming on to kick is going to be uh, Rocky Peoples and see if he can make it a 7 nothing lead with 6.34 to play here in this first quarter. Crow, the holder. And the kick is up, and it's going to be good. So the Braves lead 7 nothing. 6.34 to go. Fans will be back after this 30-second timeout. Stay with us here on the Maroon Devils Network. Fans, welcome back live on a Friday night. Glad to have you listening in here on 94.1 FM and also 1590 AM WBHN in Bryson City as well, of course, as we're on the Internet on the Maroon Devils Network showing you the uh, video uh, along with the audio. And, Coach, I guess uh, if we're uh, definite, uh, the uh, sometimes the video is better than the audio, isn't it? So anyway. Yeah, I know people get tired of listening to, to us, Gary. Not, not you, though, man. You've been, you've been around since the flood. The, the, the big flood, not the, the one. Flood. Yeah, and uh, you, you've been doing this since I can remember, and it's it's one of those things that uh, people have gotten so uh, oh, accustomed to your voice over the, over the radio. At uh, I enjoy listening to you do the Saturday games at Western wherever I can. I I try to get get to find it and uh, and listen to it because I I enjoy hearing you do it. I think you got two different voices though. Uh, you got one that's a Swain County voice, but then you got your Catamount voice, <laughs> and you do. I swear, I believe you do. I believe you change accents once you get to Jackson County. Something happens to you. I appreciate that, Coach. Here we go. This time our tight end lines up on the right side over there. Jacob Langston switches right, and we try to run it right. Oh, Damian runs into a lot of trouble leading the way up there up front. It's going to be 32 for the Braves, Sterling, Santa Maria, and and, Coach, we just couldn't get them blocked off the line of scrimmage. No, they, they, right then, they, they literally had nine people uh, within three yards of the line of scrimmage right then. And, and uh, uh, we traded the tight end, and, and they're just going to they're gonna load that offense, their, the defensive line of scrimmage up when, as long as we get the quarterback underneath and we come out there with two tight ends and, and all that. They're going to pack them down in there just like we saw Hayes will do last week. Oh, here, no they, here they are again in another five-man front. They're going to stay in that. Uh, as long as, uh, as we got two backs back there in the tight end. Oh, we dropped the football, and this time Damian hangs off, but he's going to be knocked backwards for a five-yard loss back to the 30, coming in there on the tackle for the Cherokee Braves is 55. That's uh, Jack Leno. But, again, Coach just uh, uh, couldn't get the snap together. Yeah, it's it, he's trying. I think right now it's, it's a little bit about timing, and uh, we've seen that happen several times this year. Uh, this season about the timing between the center and the quarterback, either the the he's pulling his hands out too quick or the center's hesitating with the ball split second. Um, you got to remember that center stepping as he's snapping the ball. You're right. He is on the move this time. Uh, Damian rolls to the right side, got a man open down the sideline, and he's got it down to the 30, 25, 20, and he's going to take it all the way to the house. There and the Maroon go. Devils are on the scoreboard. There what a go. shot down the sideline. Play action pass. Uh, uh, Got them all up on the line of scrimmage like that. The receiver made one cut and blew by the uh, the corner, and the corner knew he was hung out the moment it happened because when Damien appeared with that football, you could almost see the desperation in that corner uh, corner over there because he was trying everywhere in the world to get back there, and Damien threw that ball right on the money. If he had thrown it anywhere else, it would probably been incomplete or intercepted. Perfect pass, and uh, the guy who caught the touchdown, Hunter Call, is now going to come on and try to add the extra point, and uh, what, what a great play and what a great run after the catch by, again, number eight. Hunter Call as he tries to boot up the extra point, and this one is going to be good. And wow, just like that, coach, we got a tie ball game, 7 7 with 5.08 to play in the first quarter. But that might be one of the, well, it has one of the best passes Damien's had all year. Yeah, and, 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 and you don't have to drive the football. If it takes big plays to beat, beat them, then, then, then you're going to have to depend, depend on big plays. You'd like to drive the football down through there and be able to dictate some things, 
but put, you got to be able to pull that rabbit out every now and then and hang it up like that, or, or they don't respect it. That's and it. What, when they start getting in five and six and seven man fronts up there and committing that many people to the line of scrimmage, play action passes. I always catch their eyes are looking somewhere else, just like that corners was. And he had no idea that that receiver had blown by him oh. until, until he saw Damien appear with that ball, and it was it was too, too late. late. <laughs> Good call by offensive coordinator Jeff Moore over there. And again, that loosens up your defense when you throw it deep and uh, burn your secondary, then you got to respect that pass a little more as we get ready to kick it back to the Braves. So already a wide open 7-7 game and still five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Yeah, and Damon, Damon cut loose with that one. I'm real proud of seeing him throw a ball deep like that and hit somebody on stride and it be caught and collected and, and uh, for a touchdown. We've been missing uh, that all season. Outstanding. Now Hunter Call, he's been a busy guy. Caught that touchdown pass, kicked the extra point. Now he kicks it deep, and this one is going to go all the way back to the three where Mintz picks it up. Back out to the 15. He runs into traffic, and that's where he's dropped this time. He doesn't get anything extra. Yeah, did a much better job this time when we got to him getting our bodies under control. You ain't got to just go down there and knock him, knock him out of his shoes, but you just got to get him down there and get put your body on his body, and he can't go any further. But uh, uh, we've got to continue to do that, or, or he'll do what he did down here on the goal line and on the opening kickoff. He is very capable, as now the Maroon Devils will have Cherokee pinned back inside. They're going to spot it at the 16-yard line. A much better situation for our defense than what we saw the first time when they had it up here near midfield after that first return by Mintz. So now Crow lines him up. He's in the shotgun. Turns, has off to Evans, but there's in the backfield Jacob Langston. He's already been a busy man tonight. Yeah, they left Jacob unblocked, and, and uh, he he settled his feet at the line of scrimmage, waited to see the handoff, didn't take off because the back went across the quarterback's face. He waited, and then when he cut back, he was there and made the play. I tell you, Coach, you're, you're, you're kind of out of your element here tonight. We don't have as much of the instant replay here tonight. So, uh, hey, we, it, it's one and done, right? One and done, and, <laughs> and that's all right. We, when we're on the road, we gotta we got to sacrifice some things. <laughs> hey, that's right. Joe Holt does a great job whether we're at home or on the road. Crow again in the gun, back to throw. And he's got his man, Mintz, again. Mintz brought down by Bryce Sane at the 29-yard line. That's a first down for the Braves. Yeah, it wasn't bad coverage. He nope. just did a, uh, Crow did a great job of getting the ball over the linebacker's head and we just couldn't get high enough up to get a hand on that ball but he, he put it right over the top where where only his receiver could get the football and again Mintz uh, one of the best receivers in the mountains 25 catches 422 yards five touchdowns last year he had 47 catches 1129 yards and 10 touchdowns I mean he's just that big play kind of guy yeah he, he's not afraid to go catch the football and he's a big play kind of guy he he wants to make a big play. Got a little coverage over here with the safety on the right side. Oh, they threw boy. it deep on the left side. Oh, and they run under it, and they're going to score a big one. They come right back and score on a big pass play of their own. This one down there on the left sideline going all the way to Blake Smith. And, Coach, we've already seen two huge touchdown passes. Yeah, he may, he may, he had a little bit of a double move over there, and it froze our corner. And when he hesitated, our corner settled his feet, and then he turned on the Jets and just blew right by. Again, number 15, Blake Smith with a big touchdown. We saw one from our own Hunter Call just a couple of minutes ago, literally. And now the Braves come right back and throw one down the field of their own as they try to line up for the point after to make it a 14-7 lead. So uh, literally fireworks in the sky here and fireworks on the field. We're still in the first quarter. And right now we already have 21 points on the board with the Braves up 14 to 7. We'll take a 30 second timeout and we'll be right back here on the Maroon Devils Network. Fans, welcome back. Glad to have you listening again here and watching on this Friday night on the Maroon Devils Network and on WBHN. And, and uh, but uh, wow, I didn't expect this, Coach. 14 to 7. We still have 350 to play in the first quarter and already two huge plays tonight, one for each team. But it's uh, it's wide open. Yeah, when 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 you're airing it out like uh, th these last two series have been, it don't take long to put points on the board. <laughs> and uh, both throws were on the money. Uh, yes. The receivers did great jobs of running routes and getting themselves open and uh, catching the football and scoring with it. Outstanding job, Hunter Call again for our Maroon Devils. And on the other side, Blake Smith, uh, the senior wide receiver for the Cherokee Braves, who has 14 catches, and that's his third touchdown on the season as well. But got to give some credit to the quarterbacks, as we've seen Damian Lossie and, of course, for the Braves, Bobby Crow put the football 
in the receiver's hands when they were in full stride. Now as we're getting ready for Bryce Sane to bring it back on the return. Yeah, we'll see if it, it kicked the last one out of bounds over there on the far side and uh, see what kind of what their approach to this thing is. I don't know whether or not they want him. They're wanting him to kick it over there. Or it's coming off his foot wrong, but he's lined up to kind of kick it into that corner over there. We saw Hayesville keep it away from uh, – Bryce most of the night last week, and it seems like that's what teams are doing. And that's, yeah, he's aiming that one on the on the sideline. Goes out of bounds. That's good field position for us. But uh, we like it when Bryce Sane has a chance to run it back because he is very capable. Well, a lot of times you have to take what your kicker can do yeah. and, and, and use it as a strength for you. And if you feel like that they can't get the ball back, he can't get the ball far enough upfield to make it a real danger, then kick it in places where strange things can happen. And maybe you get a chance to get the football. It's not a bad strategy. Yeah, sometimes those up men are not used to handling the football, are they, Coach, no. on those returns? No, and, and, <laughs> and a lot of times it'll die. It'll hit the ground and die, and it's a live football. And if your people right. are getting down the field and, and uh, uh, the return team doesn't pick it up uh, and it doesn't go out of bounds, it's a live ball and you can recover them. Here we go. Got a different set this time. Four wides, one back right behind Damian. This time he's under center, and the Braves have a bunch of guys up in the box here. And we've got a little, uh, uh, looks like some timing all wrong on that play. The ball is loose. Cherokee picks it up. They run it back to the 21-yard line. And, Coach, that play again, it was just uh, off timing from the get-go. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know whether uh, the center, uh, Brown, didn't snap it on time or whether uh, I couldn't tell whether Damian pulled his hands out. Uh, but it seemed like they sat there for a split second, and then the ball ends up uh, fumbled around, and, and one of Cherokee's defensive linemen ends up with the football. So a big, big uh, – Tough play for our Maroon Devils here. Again, just some uh, bad timing on that particular play as the backs, the quarterback, and the center seem like we're not all on the same page. Well, see, uh, I think it should out. be a penalty. I, I, I think that may be what the officials are discussing. If the ball was never snapped and we moved, uh, it, it, I don't know why that, that – if it was never snapped and we moved, it's a five-yard penalty on us. But it's and still I see our Coach, ball. Yeah, and it's still our ball. And Coach Blankenship is arguing the point that, uh, that look, it should have been a penalty but not a turnover. I'm afraid he's not going to win the argument as the referee just turned his back and walked away. But now he's still talking it over. I, I'm not sure they have come up with a final decision here, Coach. Yeah, they have. You can't yep, – sometimes yep, you done. can't – once once they made that – they don't even know where the ball was originally. Nobody even spotted it. So Here we go. Crow handing off straight at the middle. It's Big Evans, and he's rumbling down to the 13-yard line. It's going to be a first down Braves as uh, they are just coming right up the gut with that big run. Nothing well, it go, fancy it, there. Yeah, it goes back to what we talked about earlier. Uh Although I don't believe that was a turnover, uh, it comes back to to the turnovers. And, uh, right. and right now it's been turnovers, big plays. Big play indeed. First down now for the Braves again. They spot it at the 13. 3.28 to play first quarter. They lead 14-7 with three wide. Our Maroon Devils with a four-man front. Going to be Evans again. This time we hit him in the backfield, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Might have gained half a yard, but uh, some good combination people with Thomas Allen, among others, on the tackle. Yeah, they just can't, they basically ran the same play twice right there, thinking that hopefully they could pick up the same thing, and it, it didn't happen for them then. So they'll change it up a little bit this this play. Good penetration by our defensive front. Second down and still almost 10 for the Braves. Just under three minutes to play. They lead 14-7. Knocking on the door again in the red zone here. And let's see what they line up with. Three wide. One back. It's going to be Evans beside Crow. He gets the call and he's hit in the backfield and is knocked down. And a penalty flag comes in as he's hit at the 14-yard line. we got a bunch of guys. Ian Brooks in there. Hunter Burrell in there, among others to slow down Isaiah Evans, but let's see what this flag is about. It was and thrown at the, at the spot there where he was tackled, so it was, yeah, it's holding. So that's going to be a big big penalty for the Braves here. We saw our own first series kind of messed up with a couple of penalties, and now the Braves with an outstanding opportunity here in the red zone, backing up to the 25. Yeah, anytime you're running a play that, that extends outside those tackles like that right there, uh, those officials, they watch a lot on these edges and, and, and from the backside to see uh, if somebody's being held because uh, uh, if, if playing up and down the line of scrimmage running east and west that way, a lot of times it's, it's just more than a, a lot of players can deal with. It's, they got to reach and grab somebody. 
Now, four wide for the Braves. One man in the backfield. Is this time it's going to be Mintz out of the uh, Wildcat. He wants to throw. Looking, looking. Now he's going to run, and he's going to be hit and hanging on till help arrives over there again is Jacob Langston, and he got some help over there from Big Charlie Lambert and Ian Brooks. Yeah, I'm not real sure. I think he was going to just try to throw it up deep, but uh, – it was more of a run-pass option for him. I think it was just a matter of if he thought he could run it, take off with it. And apparently pretty good coverage. He couldn't find anybody open. Now the ball is all the way back at the 30-yard line, Coach, after a loss on that play. So now the Braves are literally looking at a third down and about 26, 27 yards to go as they have to get down inside the three for a first down. Yeah, now it's when you defend the wide side of that field and you tell your secondary people linebackers, don't bite on anything. Keep your depth <laughs> and read the quarterback. Here we go, three wide. Crow to throw. Penalty is blowing the play dead. Looks like somebody is moving up front. And they're going to, yep, false start. Backing them up five. <laughs> there again, I think it was a wide receiver, and uh, that'll make a coach. Oh, boy. Spit blood. It yes, really indeed. will. It, as it as coaches you. like to say, that's a mental mistake. Isn't it? It's a bad mental mistake <laughs> when you jump before the ball snapped and, and you're lined up out there not supposed to be listening to a snap count anyway. So uh, here we go now with a third down and 32. Holy cow. This is a long way to go. Yeah, now they got they got their one of the primary receivers now into the boundary. Got two wide on the left side. Mintz is playing quarterback out of that wildcat, throws on the run, and it's going to be caught, I believe, at the 20-yard line. Yep. Believe Brings it or not, it's down. caught at the 20. A lot of people down around the football, but that's a long way from the first down. Yeah, it's, but uh, this is a I, – I I'm pretty sure right here that uh, oh, yeah. Coach Briggs is going to go for this. Fourth down and, at uh, the 19. He has no qualms about it right now. And now with fourth down at the 19-yard line, they still – have a fourth down and about to 16 to go. Got to get down to the three for a first down, Coach. So, let's see. I don't think they're going to try to kick a field goal. They're going to line yep. up and go for it. Yeah, they're going to go for it. And here's where I think Coach Briggs likes to throw this crossing, these crossing routes in behind the linebackers and right in there. Yep, right at the gut. And it's off the hands of one receiver and one of our defenders back there. The intended receiver was uh, uh, Michael Bernheisel. And it's going to be incomplete. And the good thing is Maroon Devils get the football back on downs with 46 seconds to play here in the first quarter. So even though the penalty slowed down the Braves, we saw some good defense as well. Oh, yeah, saw good defense after that. And the uh, uh, taking over the ball on downs is big right now. And a big part of it comes an important part of this game. Uh, we've got to get some more. We've got to get the momentum back now. And uh, right now, it, it, that defensive stand, it could start. Here we go. Run Devils have got to hang out of the football. Damian Lossie breaking a tackle up the line of scrimmage. 25 30 into the foot secondary. Race. It's going to be a foot, foot race. race. Block him. That's what Evans. he's doing. Now turn it on. Now he's still going. He's straight he's up the middle you. of the field. Cover Evans the trying to drink and he finally got it <sighs> all, all the way down up the 15 yard line. He was trying to play zigzag with big Isaiah Evans and he just couldn't shake him to some help. Caught up with him. Yeah, he, he did a great job right there of, of staying in behind those blockers. He probably would have been tackled uh, before that if he hadn't have but uh, in that situation he he waited on people to get out in front of him and block and uh, you got to like what you saw there he just uh, run the veer ran the veer play kept the football broke a tackle to the line of scrimmage and and took off boy he did great tackle uh breaking he did at the line of scrimmage 68 yard run for Damian Lossie and you're talking about getting momentum back here this could be the final play of the first quarter as they lined him up and the clock running now 18 seconds and counting but again the Maroon Devils knocking on the door trying to tie it up here at Cherokee Ian Brooks going in motion to the right side Damian under center and he tries to hand off and breaking a tackle down to the five. the five good run there for the Maroon Devils this time it's going to be 20 Hunter Burrow as the first quarter comes to an end we'll Swap ends of the field, and a Maroon Devil again. Almost ready to tie it up, 14-7. to 7. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Maroon Devils Network. Fans, welcome back here on Maroon Devils at the uh, start of the second quarter here. Knocking on the door, second down and goal to go from the five-yard line. Brooks in motion, and it's going to be Damian on the right side. Just kind of ran it over there between, uh, looks like the A-gap coach or might have slid over to the B-gap, but he got close down near the one-yard line. Yeah, they're using Ian Brooks there as a lead blocker, and they, he, they kind of used him as a decoy then so that uh, uh, Cherokee would bite on his motion going across through there and wherever he went up 
went up in there, they'd think the ball was coming there, and Damien ran it back to the other side. So that's they, they, what they ran down here previously to pick up uh, uh, with uh, with Brooks being the lead blocker uh, to shuffle across through there and uh, make a block uh, on the level two players. Now, Maroon Devils want a timeout to make sure we've got the right play of the ball game with 11.38 to play, 14-7 to 7 are scored, and, and we'll keep it right here, Coach. But, uh, again, we're seeing some good play from, from both teams, uh, uh, some big play. We've seen some good runs. So, uh, the way this ball game is going, who knows uh, what kind of stats we're going to have when it's all over. But, so far, it's been a fun game to watch for the fans. Uh, yeah, it, big it, it is. And when you get finally get to see some big plays, you know, we take these turnovers away, and, and uh, so – it, it then it, we can create a different atmosphere out there on that field. That's that's the big thing we've got to start working with now. That's it. Hang on to the football. Try to eliminate some of the penalties. But but looking at the uh, stands here, this place is full, and it got people down in the end zone on the fence, and a few people on the other end. So uh, you can't get many more people in here. No, it's great. It's great <laughs> to see these kind of crowds come out for Smoky Mountain Conference games. It's big for everybody and. Uh, Big for the programs, and uh, it's, it's what it's all about, man. I tell you what, if there's anything I miss about coaching other than, than being around players that made me feel younger is these kind of crowds and these kind of ball games. Oh, it's just got an excitement about it. Here we go. Second down now, goal to go from the one-yard line. Brooks in motion. Damian takes the snap, goes over the A-gap right behind the center, and I think he's in. Touchdown, yep. Maroon Devils. And that was just a well-designed play and good – Good work up front. Yeah, that's old school wedge blocking. Uh, the offensive linemen all step towards the center, and he just becomes the apex, and they just drive their feet and don't let anybody get under you and stop your feet. And uh, Damien takes the ball and literally just runs right up their back. If he has to step on him, he steps on them. One thing about these two lines, Coach, on, on the uh, Brave side and the Maroon Devil side, these are some of the biggest linemen in the conference oh, now yeah. as we kick it up oh, for the man. extra point. And this one, uh, this one went sideways. Okay. So that's going to give Cherokee a one-point lead right now, 14-13, with 11.34 to play in the second quarter. That one just a bad left. Couldn't tell if it was a bad snap, bad hold, or just, just kind of hooked it. But uh, uh, as we saw last week, those extra points are, are big. Yeah, and it could be that, that could be big in this ball game. Either way, you know, it could in, end up down to where uh, if, if we can get out front again, we'll have to go for two. Right. And uh, at any point when we score again, we'll have to go to two, for two and try to make up the difference. So uh, now let's see what the Cherokee Braves come out with as we see Kent Briggs and, again, John Mitchell down there uh, talking to the kick return team. And they have the capability of bringing it back, as we saw last year, all too well. But uh, let's see if our Maroon Devils can hold Cherokee down on the kick return as we did on our last shot. Yeah, I think uh, uh, there's a lot A lot of times you have to challenge your players out there say, he's he's a great kick returner back here. Yes. We're not going to fade it on him. Uh, we're not going to play games with him unless the ball game dictates that we squib kick it or something of that nature uh, the, and the clock or whatever. But uh, we're going to kick it to him, and we're going to go down there and try to tackle him. That's it. By the way, we've had some trouble with our Internet connection, so folks uh, that might be listening in uh, just want to pass that on to you. Yes, Hunter Call gets ready to kick it back to Ty Mintz and the Brave return team. And, again, Hunter has already had a huge first half. He's kicked an extra point. He's uh, scored a touchdown on a big pass play. And here comes Mintz from the 12-yard line, 15, 20, getting a block out to the 25 and out across the 30 to the 33-yard line where the Braves will now take over first down and 10 with plenty of time to play in the first half. Yeah, we get to get an opportunity right here to, to – uh, uh, play defense again and see if we can't change uh, some field position situations and come up with a big play and maybe even a turnover uh, on this series right here. Oh, that would be huge. One thing that I'm so happy with is the home colors of the Cherokee Braves. Maroon jerseys with gold numbers. When they have the white jerseys with gold numbers, they're just impossible to read from the press box. Can't but, see them. Uh, you really can't. But they're really nice here tonight for both teams. Back to throw is Crow. Fires. Got his man open for a first down at the 45. And it's going to be complete down there again to Bernheisel, their 5'8 senior receiver. Yeah, we we weren't hardly wide enough on our coverage. And, and uh, there's there's times when when he's running like that with the football, you've got to give a little ground. You've got to get some width uh, to keep those receivers from, from finding those underneath soft zones. Well, I tell you, that can drive a cornerback and linebacker crazy, Coach. As you know, when, when you've got a, a quarterback like that that can that has that 
danger of running anytime he rolls out like that in that uh, in that situation. Yeah, and, and uh, you know he can pull it down and run with it at any time. Uh, but uh, right then, all he all he did was look for the uh, open uh, receiver in that in that underneath uh, flat zone there, and we we didn't have wide enough coverage. So now there's we got to get uh, some more players on the field, and they're trying to uh, get them to snap the football. The the uh, officials are without us with 11 players on the field. Yeah. Now we're ready to go. Looks like everybody's got enough players. The clock starts running. 11:15 to play here in the second quarter. Braves up by one. 14-13. This time they line up strong side right for Crow. Got Mintz in motion. They fake the jet sweep. Hand off to Evans as he kind of rumbles out to the 49-yard line. He's a strong runner, and he hits that corner pretty hard. Yeah, they tried one of our tricks right there by trading the tight end and uh, trying to get a, uh, us not adjust to it. And I'm sure that's probably something that they haven't done before, and we've not seen it on film or whatever. And, uh, and th uh, that right there was an opportunity. That was one-on-one -on -one out there and big play made. Big tackle made. And we can see uh, Coach Kent Briggs calls his own plays from the sideline over here. As uh, now the Braves are looking at second down. They still need about seven to go. Just shy of midfield at their 49. Ruin Devils with that wolf front, three-man front. Two linebackers right behind them. And now we've got a timeout call. Braves apparently didn't uh, like the play that was set up, so they're going to call a time with 10.23 to play. And Coach, the way this game's going, every play is big, so – you got to make sure you're ready to go. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> no, neither coach is uh, leaving anything to chance, and no. you can't in a ball game like this because it's a. Uh, uh, you hate to say it's a must win, but uh, they're trying to find their best way to win this thing. They really are, and, and I think everybody knows with the conference uh, uh, play with some of our teams, especially our Maroon Devils and the Cherokee Braves, some of the bigger conference games still down the road. This is a big one for both teams. You don't you don't want to lose this one because then you're kind of in the hole before you go to some of those big games with Robbinsville and with Murphy coming up later. Oh yeah, and, and both both these teams right here are are trying to make improvements and trying to find still looking for themselves, uh, uh, finding their own personality and what they can do and what they can't do, and it, and it takes sometimes to mid season before you really even have a clue. Oh, no question. And we have so uh, so many young players, as we mentioned. Uh, uh, we have four senior starters, eight juniors, and a couple of sophomores who start. So I think the future is very bright. Got an outstanding JV team, I think, that's still undefeated that we can look forward to. Here we go. Braves with the football. Crow fakes, throws down the middle, but nobody's there. It's kind of like he was throwing to a zone, but it was it was open. They were attempting the screen, and now they're going to get the ineligible receivers downfield, I'm pretty sure, because uh, – the, they released way early, and, and they were up. Their entire offensive line was ten yards upfield. <laughs> now I don't know whether or not uh, uh, if you throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage, then that's not a penalty. But we'll see right here if it is a penalty, if that's what they're going to call. Yeah, because they were, they were trying, they were trying there. to throw that screen that they threw earlier underneath, and I don't know whether he just couldn't find him or it come out of his hand wrong. But he missed him, and uh, the ball took off on him, and. And uh, uh, but he was running there. He was uh, he was uh, open underneath there for just a split second. But all their linemen were downfield. They really were. They were down there in the same uh, general area. Second down or third down coming up now, and it is going to be that. Uh, no, it's going to be declined. Yep. So that'll bring up a, a third loss. down. Yeah, it's third down and and it looks like about seven. So third down and seven, and I'm run Devils trying to hold Cherokee down and get the ball back. And they're going to line him up and split two receivers wide out to the left side. One up top on the short side. That's going to be Mintz. He's over there right in front of the Maroon Devil bench, and he's going to have some help over there again with uh, Bernheisel. Well, good time to blitz right here. But Crow to throw right off. side. There's oh, Mintz man. in the gap, and he's got it for a first down at the 40-yard line. Down there on the tackle for the Maroon Devil secondary is Hunter Burrell. Yeah, he ran, he ran a curl route that time instead of running a takeoff route. Takeoff meaning just flying up the field and, and – uh, uh, trying to pull the corner out. He drove the corner off. Uh, the inside receiver then ran an out route, and he curled in behind him. And what you, what they're trying to do is pick on the linebacker, knowing the corner can't bite up on those things. So he, he's going to have to give him a little bit of room. Big play. First down now for the Braves again, just inside our 40 at the 39 with 10 minutes to play in the second quarter. 14-13, Braves lead, got a man in motion, and they run Evans to the right side, and he has a big gain of about eight, almost nine yards down to the 30-yard line before we finally bring him down. But they had they had good 
uh, Dominus on the scrimmage that time. Yeah, if he gets a crease and he gets his shoulders turned up field, man, he's a, he's a load. He's a handful. Yes. Now, his feet don't stop moving until uh, the rest of his body's on the ground, and uh, uh, he don't go down easy. So it's it's one of those things that if – uh, sometimes they're going to get it blocked right, and we've got to f try to fight back, keep that from happening. He's a tough runner, and he likes to bring those knees up, which makes him even harder to bring down. He gets the call again, and he has the first down easily down to the 28-yard line. He only needed one. He got a couple, and it's going to bring up first down and 10 for the Braves. And they're, they're kind of trying to get in a rhythm offensively, it looks like here, Coach, as they're not wasting a whole lot of time. Yeah, they fold block between the guard and tackle that time, and uh, uh, all they were trying to do is get a one-yard crease for him uh, to get his shoulder pads in. They didn't even care about getting the linebacker blocked. They, all they wanted to do is get the line, line of scrimmage blocked and let him get what he can get. Here goes Mintz on the right side this time. This time they're going to put uh, the tight end on the strong side right. Twins on the left side, get a man in the slot, and it's going to be Evans again, just straight up the good again, nothing fancy. And a penalty flag coming in late as Evans carries down to the 21-yard line. Yeah, I think that's going to be another one of those backside holding. When uh, those offensive yes. linemen feel uh, defensive linemen moving uh, towards the football, they, they just uh, – they reach and grab them sometimes, and once your hand gets either outside the shoulder pads or, or a hold of a jersey, then uh, those those officials see that kind of stuff. So now they're going to back it up uh, to the 31-yard line. It's going to bring up a first down, and it looks like uh, about 14, 14 or so, with just under nine minutes to play here in the second quarter. And uh, But, again, a great crowd here on hand at Cherokee High School at Ray Kinsland Stadium. Our best prayers and wishes going out to – uh, Mr. Ray Kinsland, as he is not able to be with us here tonight, we hope he's better real soon. First down and long for the Braves. Isaiah, they play fake. Oh, they dropped the ball. Crow dropped it. He gets back on it at the 38-yard line. But, Coach, he started to throw. Ball just popped out of his hand. Yeah, uh, send a blitz off the edge over there. We used to call that a rocket blitz. Uh, and the edge player outside, he comes off the corner, and the back picks him up. But the quarterback feels that pressure, and he's trying to get rid of that football in a hurry. And as he <laughs> slung his arm back, it just popped out. Uh, coach told me this week, sometimes if you hit a quarterback enough, sometimes they like to throw it a little early. Yeah, he he saw the blitz coming, which uh, he was facing it, and it was coming right into his face. And uh, uh, as the back tried to pick it up, he was awful close to him, and he was trying to get rid of that thing as quick as possible. Second down and roughly 20. Oh, they drop the snap again. They try to throw it, and it's going to be knocked down. It's yeah. going to be an incomplete pass. But, again, just some bad timing for the Braves as the snap never really made it to the quarterback and blew it up. Yeah, they were trying to run the screen again uh, out here to the same player. Uh, number 15, he was cutting, doing his underneath move. Those linemen released. Uh, this time he was behind the line of scrimmage, so it wouldn't be a, uh, an eligible receivers downfield but counting those offensive linemen. So, uh he, he was trying to get it in there to him. It just didn't work. So now the uh, Braves struggling offensively, and, and Coach Briggs calling a timeout, I think, to maybe maybe settle his troops down here with a 7.55 to go, Coach, because right now I think they're a little rattled with the last two plays, that ball uh, popping out. Yeah, and it's a, it, it's, it's a long way for them to go right here, but uh, this is automatically two-down territory for them. So I think any time they cross the 40, uh, it's two-down territory for them. And, you know, we saw that a lot uh, last week from Hayesville. When you've got a quarterback who is capable and a big receiver, a lot of times they can really, really uh, go for it just almost anywhere on the field. Yeah, and, and the way the way they run their uh, um, their passing game with a lot of underneath things, uh, two downs to pick up 20 yards, That's nothing, they think that's nothing. Oh, no question. We're uh, glad to hear we got the Internet back under control here, and, and it's been kind of spotty here tonight at Cherokee High School, but uh, it's back, and we apologize for any inconvenience and, and uh, loss of uh, uh, broadcast that we might have experienced down the line, but hopefully we can keep this Internet on. It's a tricky thing, especially up here between these two mountains. You'd think on this outstanding campus that wouldn't be an issue, but, but it is, and it has been ever since the school has been here, just to uh, be brutally honest. No, I'll down. tell you, where well, it's been ever since there was an Internet. <laughs> now, let me tell you that. Exactly. that if there's an Internet, something's going to break. <laughs> it, it can, no doubt about it, Coach. Third down and long for the Braves. They line them up. Four wide receivers. A lot of guys coming after Crows. Sets it up on the right side to Evans. Breaks a tackle. He's still running wild all the way down to the 20-yard line. He's still a couple of yards short of the first down, but a huge play. And you know they're going to go for it on fourth down and short. That's it. That's that other 
underneath passing game. They're not going to try to air it out deep, but it, like they did with that big play earlier, um, they they feel they have more, way more confidence in throwing that ball short like that and letting their athletes take over and run the football. And coach, that's exactly what happened. Evans was over there on the right, and he had a whole lot of room. And when you have a, a back like that, he can make people miss. Yeah, and it, and he's hard to bring down in the open field anyway. Fourth down and two. They sling it out there on the right side. Ball is going to be knocked loose. It's picked up, and they're going to say it's incomplete, even though our back took off with it. Uh, looks like the receiver, I'm not sure, really had control of that football. They, uh, I would like to see the replay of that because it was <laughs> it was bang, bang. But it was. I would like to think that uh, he, he hung on to it long enough for us to – call it a fumble but uh, Bryce was heads up uh, <laughs> scooping the ball up and uh, and taking off with it boy oh there's a late flag somebody said something because the play's been dead now for several seconds somebody said something a flag is down so we're probably going to see an unsportsmanlike conduct on on one of the teams down here inside the 20 yard line and coach well, Neil Blankenship not right happy right now I think it's one of the one of our players yes it is because he's yeah. having a little uh, having come a to meet. Jesus <laughs> meeting with him over there. He is. And, and so now, instead of the football up near the 20-yard uh, line, well, holy that moly, it comes all the way. Well, it's back to the 10, but still, that's a big difference. Yeah, you you got to get a and, – and it's hard to do, man. These young men, you got they got to keep their temperament under control because you're doing nothing but hurting your football team in situations like this. And, yes. And this, it goes through – from the colleges up through the pros, it's the same thing. You see it week in and week out, and uh, uh, yeah, that'll make you a uh, coach spit blood too. Oh, no question. This time, Damian runs it to the right side, and that's such a fine line, coach, as you know as well as anybody, is Damian uh, running hard. Oh, there's a late flag. I think we may have a late hit. Uh, personal foul on the Brave defense. But, you know, football is, is an intense emotional game, and sometimes it is. It's hard to keep your emotions under control, but you got to. Yeah, and, and you don't know – you're not out there in the mix and on the field. You you think it, it's as quiet as it is. They're not having the same conversations out there as you're having with your friends in the stands. Let me right. put it to you that way. You're not talking about somebody's uh, new child or or your grandchildren. Or no, there there's a, these young men have a uh, they're out there fighting and clawing with each other and sweating and bleeding and uh, uh, but uh, it it things they say things they lose their composure oh, yeah. they lose their tempers and. Uh, and it's, and it's hard to keep it under control. So right now, uh, it, it is a personal foul against the Brave defense. They hit a running back late. Uh, Damian got hit late after the whistle had blown. It's an automatic first down. Now the line of scrimmage is at the 27-yard line. First down and 10, Maroon Devils. Got a wing on the right. Bryce Sane lines up on the left of Damian Lossy back in the shotgun. Damian's going to run to the left side, finds a little gap, and he got a couple of yards, and it's going to be brought down at the 29-yard line. Yeah, he... Staying on his feet there, trying to pick up all those yards. I uh, he, he hope he hangs on to that football now. We don't need a turnover at this point in, in stage of the game. Oh, no question. You were talking about uh, uh, talking about babies and stuff. I want to say congratulations to Michael Watson. He's a proud papa of a brand-new son named after Grandpa Nathaniel. Well, I heard the other night while I was uh, talking about how pretty his little girl was and looked like his wife that she was in labor at the hospital. I got home and found that out. So uh, <laughs> I apologize again, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. And this time Damian picks the handoff, running wild into the secondary, out across the 45, still going. Big first down. I tell you, Damian Lossie's playing maybe the best game of the season right here in this first half. Well, that's the option play we talked about earlier. He's riding the back. Uh, he's looking to watch the defensive end. The defensive end is unblocked. He's seeing which way he commits. And when he sees him commit to the running back and start widening, he just pulls the ball. That's why you see him hanging, uh, hanging on the ball for so long in there. If that end squats and stops, then he's going to give it to him. Now it's going to be Bryce lining up to the right side of Damian. Uh, got a wing over here with Ian Brooks on the right side. The handoff goes to the left side. No, Damian fakes it, runs it to the right side, and is going to be stuck and driven back, but he still got some positive yards before being tackled over there by Ty Mintz. Yeah, it looks good when you drive somebody back like that and the crowd gets all pumped up, but still he picked up uh, positive yardage, and that's that's what it's all about. Exactly. Damon's doing a heck of a job staying on his feet tonight. He is. Uh, he's on his feet a whole lot more than what uh, – uh, he has been before. He's he's taking the football, and he's getting every yard he can get. 
And uh, to use a term that our old buddy Steve Moon don't like to use a lot, he's getting a lot of yak yards. Yak yards, those, yep. Those uh, yards after contact. Mm-hmm. And he is making Cherokee's defense pay. Now we got uh, an official blowing the whistle here. We'll see what this timeout is about. If it's official or a team is going to be charged a timeout, looks like the officials are just calling one. Looks like we've got uh, an injury. So we got some blood, and they're going to have to fix that, Coach. As you know, they've got to patch that up before they can get ready to play here. And it uh, takes a little Band-Aid, a little tape, and maybe some gauze, and we're ready to go. Yeah, I'm not, not, I think they were talking about the spot, too, exactly where uh, I don't think the ball was in the right place, and uh, they saw it from the markers. So here we go. Maroon Devils with the football. Bryce running to the left side, trying to cut outside, and does, and he's got a first he got down. got first down. Good running by Bryce Sane. He had the big linebacker out there who really couldn't catch him, but uh, he had to run him down from behind, and there's a late penalty flag on the tackle as well. Yeah, that little bit of irritation over there. It's the same thing we were talking about, and I think they a little irritated that Bryce uh, ran that thing uh, so well that time. He put that little stutter step in there. He, he didn't did. have any blockers. He put that stutter <laughs> step in there, and, and that helped him get the first down because it made that corner, uh, make it, made him get tangled up with his feet, and I think he got frustrated and, might have said something or reacted in a in a very unsportsmanlike manner. Oh yes, indeed. That cost him a personal foul. And wow, instead of up at the uh, about the 40 yard line, the football is now coming all the way to the Cherokee 22 and a half yard line, coach. So another big penalty, and the Braves keep moving backwards. So now first down and 10, 5.13 to play in the second quarter. Maroon Devils down by one, but now we're getting close to knocking on the red do zone door. Damian fakes to the right, runs to the left, a little stutter <laughs> step, and he's down the sideline, and I think he ran out of bounds. Nope, he didn't run out oh, yet. Oh, wow, he's still nah. going. Oh, there he goes. Holy cow, we yep. saw somebody over there throw a helmet. And I'm not sure what that's about, but one of the Cherokee helmets was over on our side of the field. Yep. And I don't see any penalty flag, but I know one thing, we've got a first down. we got a first down, and that, that, that was unbelievable. That play fake, wow. and we, we pulled one of their stunts where we, we folded everybody over the top and, and pulled those uh, two interior linemen, and they were just on the edge blocking for Damien. And he waited on his blockers to get set, and uh, – then he just continued to run. He stayed on his feet as as good as I've ever seen. Outstanding job. He's averaging 12, uh, 10 yards a carry, 12 carries, 121 yards already in the first half. Outstanding work for Damian Lossie. 445 to play. Here we go. First down and goal to go from about the seven-yard line. Mm. Oh, they stuck us in the backfield. This time the blitz came in and got us as Bryce had uh, just couldn't get his feet under him. It's too quick. Yeah, and it, the, the – uh, Cherokee was a little bit misaligned, and they misaligned right to where we were carrying the football because uh, you could see the linebackers were a little bit uh, confused about the the A and B and C gap on the <laughs> on the left hand side. There was nobody lined up there, and uh, uh, somebody was in the wrong place. And but they were stacked up over here where where we were going to run the football. 55, Jack Lena, one of their linebackers, now back in the game for the Braves as we have Ian Brooks in motion. Damian hands off left side. We got a yard, but they stuck that gap pretty quick as well, Coach. And now we're looking at third down and goal from about the seven-yard line. Yeah, this is a tough place to be right here because uh, you, you start questioning yourself about field goals and everything else because you got to be thinking – a down or sometimes two ahead. What what are we going to do if we don't get this thing in right here? But uh, you hope that you can get it in. But if not, a decision has to be made uh, after this down right here as to what you're going to do. If you're close enough, you go. Uh, if not, then we need to make up the points, uh, the point that we're behind on the scoreboard at least before halftime. Hey, that's that's the key. Third down now again. Probably going to call timeout right here and talk it over because we have uh, whether we're in two down, uh, four down territory here or not. Yeah, the uh, play clock did run down. We did call a timeout, no penalty. So now we're looking at third down and seven. But obviously a big play coming up with 317 to play in the second quarter. Uh, and this has been a heck of a ball game. We've seen some outstanding play offensively on both sides. Oh, yeah, it's, it's been a big yeah. night for, for both teams as far as uh, big plays and uh, uh, airing the ball out and good things happening. But uh, uh, it's just it's fun to, uh, to see our players 
uh, finally start to have some chances at big plays and uh, uh, seeing who's going to make them and see how they're being made. And uh, uh, it, it, it creates a lot more momentum for you and uh, people get more excited about it. Oh, no question. And as I mentioned before, Damian Lossie, I think, is playing his uh, best football tonight that than we've seen all season. He's making some good decisions uh, with the option. We saw the big touchdown pass earlier to uh, Hunter Call over there, and he just really – uh, looks pretty comfortable out there right now. Right now he does, and and uh, I don't think he's very flustered about anything. Uh, even uh, the mishandled uh, uh, snaps he's had and whatnot, that's something that he just has to – he's young enough that he puts it behind him, and he really doesn't have time to think about it. Here we go, third down and seven after the timeout. He's going to hand off. Bryce Saint turning to the left side, trying to get it outside. Well, Cherokee's not going to let us outside is the problem. Their lineman just throwing that play out, and we didn't have enough people out there. It was just too many numbers. They just didn't let us outside. The uh, Bryce's helmet comes off, and and uh, but uh, but again, they just had a lot of jerseys out there, and we couldn't get to that corner yeah I don't, i'm not real sure what all transpired over there i couldn't see for all the uh the goings on but somehow bryce's helmet got taken off and dismantled uh over there on about the five yard line so uh something transpired and we'll we'll see here as, as it goes but it looks like we're going to attempt to a uh, a field goal yep. right here and at least try to make up this one point and you're right hopefully coach. he gets a good kick right here Hunter Call is going to come in. They're going to spot it at uh, just outside the 12, so basically a, almost almost a 23-yard field goal between 22 and 23. The snap is good. The hold is good. Looks like the kick is uh, no, oh, it wide right. Wide right, so it's not going to go with 2.54 to play. So, wow, mm. it's still a one-point Cherokee lead and still a whole lot of time left. Fans, stay tuned. We're going to take a 30-second break, and we'll be back after this 30-second timeout on the Maroon Devils Network. Fans, welcome back. Just as the first play gets underway for the Braves on the turnover of Dows after we uh, try to field goal and, and hit it wide right, got a penalty flag, another holding call on the Cherokee Braves. And so far tonight, Coach, the penalty flag defensively has kind of been our friend. Oh, it is. And, and you know, holding penalties, that's that's lazy linemen. That's what I always used to call it. When right, you start getting right. that many holding penalties in the line of scrimmage, I don't care what offense you're running, uh, because officials will get tired of calling it, and that's the way a lot of coaches look at it. But if you continue to do it, it just makes offensive linemen lazier and lazier to where they don't move their feet, and all they want to do is reach and grab people. And, and on a night like tonight, it could, it, it could really end up costing you. Here we go, four-man front for the Maroon Devils. Back to throw is going to be Crow. Fires to the sideline, got his man at the 22, as he's forced out of bounds over here on the sideline by our Maroon Devils secondary, Daniel Ammons over there, forcing their number 15, Blake Smith, out of bounds, but they get a first down. And that stops the clock as well with 2.33 to play. Not sure about the timeout scenario, but uh, I know uh, both teams have used some timeouts here in the first half already. Yeah, I believe that brings up second down, Gary, because they uh, yep. uh, they they, uh, right. they got penalized there and they got they got back between the sticks on that play, throwing that underneath route to that wide out. He's You're probably exactly. going to do the same thing right here on the outside. Second and eight. Crow is going to be hit by Millsaps and sacked back inside the 15-yard line. So, Big Nick got inside, got his arms around him, and uh, uh, not too many people bigger than Nick. Yeah, we went to a different coverage right then. And, before, and when he looked out there, he realized that our corner squatted this time and didn't follow that receiver into the middle of the field, turned him over to the safety, and he wanted to throw that ball to that out right over so he could try to get him catch it and get out of bounds and stop the clock. And uh, we squatted underneath it over there to cover two look. And uh, – when the corner doesn't drop like that, I mean, if he throws it, it's, there's a good chance it's going to get picked. Yeah, that's not a, not a good sign. So now it's going to be Mintz wide right. Now they're looking at third down and 15. 150 to play in the first half. Devils down by one. Crow back to throw. Here comes the blitz, and he's hit from the blind he side. He never saw Hunter Burl coming. He hit him in the that, back, and he goes down at the five. That's the same blitz we ran earlier, only this time the back was on the other side and couldn't pick him up. He was he was looking at the defensive uh, tackle out there trying to help with him, and uh, we came off the side where the back 
black wasn't, and uh, uh, that that rocket blitz will do it every time. I I, <laughs> uh, I used to start every game uh, running that blitz on the first defensive play we had, just so we could try to make something happen. It didn't always work, but uh, the kids liked to do it, and they knew what that's what we were going to do. Oh, I tell you, Crow never saw Hunter Burrell coming over there, and he was coming uh, like he was shot out of a rocket. And now we're going to have another timeout with a minute twenty-eight to play. Because Cherokee is going to have to punt the ball away. We're going to get it back in outstanding field position as they're literally punting from their own end zone. Yeah, and if, if we can handle this one, if, we, if Bryce will get deep enough and get us some decent field position with with a minute and 28 left to go, then uh, we've got a chance to make something happen here before before halftime. Oh, no doubt with uh, 128 to play. Uh, the timeout stopping things here at Cherokee. Don't forget now, fans, next week we're going to be on the road at Andrews. Two weeks from tonight we'll be back at home with Rosman. And then things get interesting as we go to Murphy and host Robbinsville back-to-back. But every game is big in the Smoky Mountain Conference, as we saw last week, and we're seeing again this week. A one-point game last week, a one-point game here on the first half this week. But uh, what else is new, Coach? Yeah, That's- they- what do you expect? It is the Smoky Mountain Conference. <laughs> we call it the toughest conference in the state, and and uh, there's not too much argument there when you look at the success of the Smoky Mountain Conference over all the years. Now they're going to drop Mintz literally back in the end zone. He's going to punt it. But, Coach, as we mentioned, uh, anytime you got a guy like this back there, mm-hmm. he's a threat to run or, or, or otherwise. Yeah, this is a dangerous situation uh, to, to have him in because if he mishandles the ball even in – Runs out of there with it. He can make crazy things happen. Pretty good punt. It's going to be going out of bounds up near the 43-yard line. So we're going to get the ball back in Cherokee Brave territory with a minute 23 to play. They're going to spot it at the 41. So now let's see if we can make something happen before we take it to the locker room. But it's been uh, it's been an interesting first half. Penalties have played a major role here uh, for both teams, really. It really they really have, and and uh, that's a great punt right there, and and uh, to get it out of bounds so we couldn't handle it, but. Uh, he kicked that ball further than what I thought it was going to travel. Yeah, he was literally uh, almost at the back of the end zone, and that ball it actually sailed out of bounds about the 43. We're going to get it at the 40 where it crossed the stripe, and here we go. Got five wide, empty backfield, and we got people jumping all over the place. We're yeah. going to back up five. As uh, yeah, we got had three or four people on the wrong on the wrong song on that verse. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> you nailed it right there. They, yeah, they were they were. Uh... <laughs> They were <laughs> hit the wrong note. That, 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 yeah, I'm not real sure what's happening. I don't know whether or not they're not hearing the uh, snap count or whether the, whether uh, something's not being made clear because we've done that a couple, almost three times now. I think where where the ball's either not been snapped or uh, uh, more than one person was moving. Let's put it that uh, way. That's it. A lot of guys moving. Got a wing on the left, and we're going to run it to the left side. Damian Lossie fakes the handoff and keeps it all the way down to the 40. Two-yard line. It's going to bring up a second down and 12. Got to keep an eye on the clock now with 112 and counting before halftime. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that you uh, – that that clock is your enemy right now. Yeah. And especially when you huddle like we do and we don't come right back to the line of scrimmage and make play calls because we're down underneath a minute now and it's it, uh, it's just taking us too long if we really want to try to hit this thing. So I'd, I'd say right now we're going to be looking at a couple of shots at big plays down the field. Got Hunter Call lined up on the right side. We're going to hand off, though. Bryce Saint reverses field, spins, mm-hmm. and he actually almost broke it, but he lost his footing at the 38. He's going to bring up third down at about eight yards to go, and we might see one more play before halftime as the clock is running. Are we out of timeouts? I think we might be. I think uh, I don't we, see them on the board over there. Yeah, I don't see any timeouts, so I think we're out, and I think uh, they probably are too. Third down and about uh, eight to go. 19 seconds and counting. Two wides. Damian Lossie looking to the left side. Fires it long down the middle, and it's going to be picked off at the eight-yard line. Cherokee has it at the 10. Got a penalty flag down. Nine seconds to play before we go to the locker room as, as uh, Bryce was down there, but they got their hands on the ball. Yeah, I'm not real sure what this penalty is either because it, it happened right at the point of the interception. And that's the, that's the trouble you get into when you don't have the timeouts and, and you have to try to throw the, the deep ball because you're running out of downs. Uh, they can fall off there on you, and, and uh, most of the time it's either incomplete or intercepted. You very rarely see that, that hit for a touchdown, just unless the other team goes completely to sleep. 
Now they're going to give Cherokee the ball at the uh, 15 first down. And they're probably, uh, let's see if they try to break a big play or if they just hit an E and, and go to halftime. But uh, they're signaling the play in from the sideline as the clock is stopped here. Yeah, he'll try to make he'll try to make something happen. I don't know that he'll throw a deep ball, but they'll uh, try to get one of those backs loose or throw it underneath again on the screen and uh, and uh, yeah, we see if, see if he can break it. Yeah, Mintz is wide right. Evans in the backfield behind Crow, and he hands off, and they pop it outside. Mintz blocking out there for Evans. He's on the sideline, but goes out of bounds still with three seconds to play. Yeah, that's just the kind of thing they're going to do to get the ball upfield. I mean, he's that athletic to get him the, give him the football and uh, see what he can do. And we see it so much more, Coach, than we used to see it back in the day. Wide receivers have to block on a lot more plays than ever. Well, these spread offenses, if you don't use them as blockers, <laughs> uh, they're no use to you. I mean, that's, that's right. Because you, you're gonna, if you're going to run the football, they've got to be able to block defensive backs and even at times linebackers. And yeah, we saw Vince doing that on that uh, play over there. And we see so many wide receiver screens anymore that uh, the wide receivers really have to be able to block. Three-man rush. For the Maroon Devils, Crow winds up and throws it deep. In double coverage, Mintz is down there, but he's out of bounds, and the clock runs out. And this game will go to the halftime locker room with the Braves on top right now, 14-13, to 13, but it's been, uh, it's been a great first half here. We've seen a lot of fireworks, a lot of running, a lot of throwing, a lot of penalty flags, but it's uh, going to be interesting now, Coach, to see what kind of adjustments each team can make at halftime? Yeah, and see see who really wants to take charge of this ball game. We were in the same situation last week. Uh, one team's got to come out here and try to establish themselves. Both teams are struggling with with each other right now. There's nobody that's got a a definite advantage on anything right now. Cherokee's probably the the better big play type team or driving the football, but we still we keep finding ways to get back in it, and that's that's just as part uh, an important part of a characteristic of a team as anything is how do we get ourselves back in this thing. Hey, no question about that. Fans, stay tuned. More coming up. Stay with us here on the Maroon Devils Network. We're going to take a two-minute timeout, and we'll be right back. So stay with us. We'll be back. We're just about ready for the second half, taking a look at some of the first half stats here from Cherokee. The uh, stats are almost as even as the scoreboard, and the Braves are up 14-13 at halftime. But in the first half, great offensive work, 30 plays, 206 yards for the Braves, 22 plays, 214 yards for our Maroon Devils. Running the football, Coach, as you know, that's uh, kind of our MO. 20 carries, 147, 147 yards. But the Braves, on the other hand, 17 carries, 14 yards. So an interesting stat to look at from the rushing category. Yeah, it, it, it wouldn't. It didn't feel like it would be that way. It no. really doesn't. But uh, uh, that's the kind of ball game we've been watching here, and we understand that we had some technical difficulties in the first half, and some folks have been uh, uh, on the internet talking about it, and uh, we apologize for that. And uh, um, our producer over here, I think he's got everything kind of. Joe's got everything straightened <laughs> out. He's got his fingers crossed. He's got everything crossed right now. Yeah, yeah he's trying to keep it under control. But we apologize for that. It was a. Uh, um, we didn't really know we weren't we weren't on the air for a while, but uh, uh, I think we're back now and going full speed again. But uh, if you if you missed it, uh, the scoring was uh, big plays to begin with, and uh, uh, both teams struck with big plays, and and uh, the kicking game then jumps back in on a missed extra point, and uh, we end up with a 14 to, uh, being behind by one Cherokee up 14 to 13. That again, that extra point, and we also had a missed field goal that loomed large. But uh, Cherokee threw the ball well, out throwing us 192 yards to 67. Here we go with a kickoff return. Ian Brooks up the middle. He breaks through the first line down to the 40 to the 38 yard line. What a what a, a rocket as he took off with that football coach. And Cherokee was not ready for that. Yeah, they're playing bit them right then. Uh, they they're kicking that ball towards the boundary, trying to make a big play for themselves. And uh, Ian made them pay for it right then. He took the ball and went north and south, uh, blew right between their defenders, and their defenders really actually overran him, and he saw that. And when he hit the uh, – if he hadn't been tackled when he was, that was a touchdown. 
Wow, outstanding work by Ian Brooks. And again, he's the guy who handles the ball some anyway. So he just grabbed it and took off. Here we go, first and 10 to get things underway here. And we go right up the A gap and a good run. That's Ian Brooks on that carry. And he's kind of the, the hot hand man right now, so to speak, as he carries down to the 31 yard line. A five yard pickup, second down and five coming up. Yeah, that was the first misdirection play that we've ran uh, really in the ball game. And, and what we did was we faked the veer one way, uh, folded an offensive lineman over the top up into the uh, a gap on the other side and and uh, gave the uh, the ball to brooks and he picks up positive yards on it picks up five yards outstanding work twins on the left side this time as we're just underway third quarter and we line them up with split backs this time behind damian lossy damian carries and he's very close to the first down down near the 26 yard line a big shout out to some folks listening in on the maroon devils network jordan cody uh steven nichols and dan manley we thank those guys for hanging with us and listening in, and uh, whether you're on the radio or on the uh, network here, Coach, it's always good to have Maroon Devil football handy. Yeah, that 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 time right there, they just uh, uh, quarterback used to Bryce as a as a blocker, uh, opened up like he was going to run the veer, and Bryce blew up on the linebacker, and he just cut it right in behind him there, and it's a good good play scheme already. Outstanding work, first down and 10 now for the Maroon Machine at the 26 of Cherokee, and we go straight up the gut. For about a yard this time at the 25, Cherokee penetrated and did a good job. Well, they're going to actually give us a couple of yards as we got just out across the 25. Yeah, he... And we had, a, had an alarm go off yeah. here in the press box with 10.30 to play in this Attention. third quarter. 14-13. to 13. Braves up over our Maroon Devils. So now the Maroon Devils handoff is going to be Bryce Singh carrying down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. It's going to bring up, looks like, Coach, about a third down and a couple. We're, we're getting close. Keep chipping away with that running game. Yeah, and, and uh, Cherokees had to change their defensive front uh, now because of the things that we've been doing. They're having to uh, shuffle people up there, and, and uh, we're pushing them in and out of that five-man front, and we catch them out of it and run right at them. It's giving them a problem. Now, now, the, they, now they go back to it, and uh, uh, they're going to try to defend the line of scrimmage now. Twins to the right side. We hand off to the right side. It's going to be Ian Brooks very close to a first down. By the way, if you're hearing noise in the background, we have a false alarm on an emergency actually here on the press box where we are, uh, but everything is okay. But right now, our Maroon Devils, as the officials are going to bring on the chains of measure, Coach, from here, it looks like we're short, but... Let's hope it's just a bad angle on our part. Well, I hope they measure. That's what they're supposed to do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're going sure. to. Yep. So now they bring the chains on with 9.32 to play, and we're down by one. But we've got the football driving. And we know with third down and short inside the red zone, we're probably going to be going for it. And, if, and, again, if you're hearing that alarm here in the press box in our background, it's some kind of a false alarm that has gone off, and we don't know how to turn it off. And we apologize for that uh, very annoying sound that you're hearing in the background. But we are just a tad short, Coach. But, hey, you know, it's uh, we're going to go for it. Yeah, I don't care if we, sh we get it or not right there. But we got to they have to measure it. Now we know. And at least it shows you how much you got to get. And it's not a guessing game. And they're wanting us to leave here, but uh, I don't think we're going to. I'm kind of ignoring it like I do my wife. <laughs> Fourth down and short. Here we go. Split backs. Damian under center. Now he steps back. He's surveying the defense. Right now, Cherokee looks like with eight guys up there on the box. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna pack them in there, and uh, we're waiting to see what's going to transpire now. Now we get set again on the line of scrimmage. Damian under center. We only need a yard. Damian carries it. And I think he's got it at the 15-yard line, yeah. so just enough. Yeah, he picked, see, it looks like he picked up plenty for the first down, picked up a, a whole yard, and that got us uh, out, down to the 15-yard line. So that's all we needed and now. Now that official is going to come over and talk to Coach Briggs because I think they're hearing this alarm too, and they don't know what's going on. So it's going on actually in the building where we're located that overlooks the Cherokee High School field. It's uh, basically a multi-purpose building that they have uh, uh, other uses for during the week. Obviously, this is not a really uh, a really dedicated press box, so to speak. But uh, but there is a lot of noise, and they're telling people to head for the nearest exit. But 
but apparently it's just kind of a false alarm that somebody might have pulled a prank down under us and actually pulled the fire alarm to set this thing off. That appears to be the case. Right now there's a timeout on the field. We're going to break down the line while they get this straightened out, and we'll be back. Stay with us here on the Maroon Devils Network. High School, and we have been told that we are supposed to evacuate the press box. Now, so we're going to have to do that, but uh, hopefully we can come back at some point and resume broadcasting. But right now, the officials here on the press box at Cherokee High School have told us we have to evacuate. Hang on, and hopefully we can come back and finish up the game. Maroon Devils down by 1, 14-13, 9-17 to play in the third quarter. We'll try to return as soon as we're allowed to. Thank you. Fans, welcome back. We hope you're listening and also able to watch on the Maroon Devils Network. We apologize for that delay. We'll explain it in just a minute, but we're already ready to go. Damian Lossie under center at the 15, and we hand off nice hole for Bryce Same. He gets about four yards, but, Coach, we had a uh, what we think is a false alarm here at the press box. Everybody in the press box had to evacuate while they confirmed everything was okay, but looks like we're okay and ready to go. Yeah. And we're I'm out of breath. breath. <laughs> that's four, <laughs> four stories worth of – that's twice I've walked up steps now, and that's enough on this old fat man. <laughs> hey, the next time we want to go down, don't we? Yeah, I want an elevator. <laughs> All right, here we go. Back to live action again, second down and six. Maroon Machine at the 11-yard line, and Damian hands off, and Bryce has hit hard as he crossed inside the 10. Going to bring up a third down, but, boy, they really – they really went after him on that play. Yeah, I believe that was Ian Brooks that time in, uh, yeah. because we ran it to this right side. We, we ran an unbalanced line, and we still couldn't get them all blocked because they're going completely selling out. It's it's pretty much a 53 look on defense. And uh, when when you got your free safety within six yards of the line of scrimmage, uh, he's a linebacker. He They're just, they're just trying to make him – uh, an extra linebacker in this whole scheme of things here. And that's Ty Mintz coming out there as he's playing up near the line of scrimmage. Damian Lossie rolling, firing, got his oh. man, and he dropped it. Oh, right in the hands of Hunter Call. He had to kind of turn around, but it kind of hit him in the hands. There's a late penalty flag that may be for a late hit over here. Let's see what they call this. I'm not real sure because it, the flag was late. I couldn't see anybody out there holding, and it looks like some of the Cherokee players are uh, – uh, uh, Doubting what what it was that was called, so we'll see right here what what the situation is. Uh, uh, he dropped the football and he, then he got hit. So I don't know whether he's asking him if he thought it was a late hit and uh, and he threw the flag for it and asking him for his judgment. I'm not sure. That seems to be the case. And boy, I thought we had six there for a moment, Coach. We had Hunter call open down here at the five yard line, and uh, just couldn't come up with the. Uh, Reception, and here's the referee picking up the flag, and it looks like he may wave it off, wave and he will, off. so no call. Yeah, and uh, we had a couple of receivers running open then, but, uh, uh, yeah, we got to make those plays right there. That's the kind of play that has to be made uh, if, if we're going to make this thing go our way. So it's going to bring up fourth and five here, and uh, this is a situation where we pretty much going to have to go for it at this distance. No doubt. At the 10-yard line, fourth down and five, Damian Lossie uh, just got the play called in. He's ready to go. Split backs right behind him. Twins on the right side. Everybody else in tight. Strong side right. Damian backs off under center, and it looks like we may call a timeout. And Coach Neil Blankenship signals timeout, and we'll keep it right here. We hope you're back with us. We hope uh, uh, Brandon Dehart is back at the station, we hope, running the controls back there, and, and uh, Joe Holt here with the Maroon Devils Network. But, again, we had literally an alarm went off here on the Cherokee press box, which is four stories high, and the officials came in and said, this is the first time for us. We don't know the situation, but everybody had to evacuate. The law enforcement and fire department personnel were here. Everybody went out. They checked everything out, Coach, and everything seems okay. Yeah, they, they stopped the ball game. The officials even yes. uh, realized that there was a problem, and uh, uh, most of the fans did, but uh, nobody was leaving, so we were the only ones that had to step out of here for a little while till they got it straightened out. The, the alarm, only, I think, only occurred in, in the press box here. Yes. So. And they had to stop the game because if they evacuate the press box, all the PA and clock people, they were out of here so they couldn't run the clock. So so uh, everything kind of works together, but we're back ready to go. But right now we are looking at a fourth down and 
five, and we need a big fourth down conversion right here at the Cherokee 10-yard line. Got a man in motion coming across, making it twins to the wide side. Play action. Not going to be able to get it looking, off. looking, nope. looking, looking, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield, trying to get away, but uh, he's going to be finally forced out of bounds over there at the 15-yard line. He was trying to look back in the end zone, Coach, and, and they were after him. Yeah, Bri Bryce Lane was running a wheel route out of the backfield. It, uh, um, they scored on uh, uh, last week, uh, throwing it to him out of the backfield, and uh, the corner didn't bite on the other play action and just stood and waited and, and – uh, when he looked up uh, to throw the football to Bryce, he was covered in the end zone, and uh, he tried to turn it upfield and make something happen. So now it's going to be Cherokee's ball as, again, we got inside the red zone, coming away with no points with 7.49 to play in the third quarter. 14-13, still a one-point Cherokee lead. We got four guys up front on the defensive line. Back to throw is Crow. Airs it out left side. Got a man, but we caught up to it, mm. and the ball is going to be knocked away. Good, good coverage by Daniel Ammons. Coach, he, he saw that ball coming all the way and literally almost intercepted yeah, it. Yeah, he had it picked. It hit him right in the chest there. He did a good job of opening up his – his body to the field and being able to cover that receiver. He had help deep, and I'm pretty sure that was a kick cover, what we refer to as a kick coverage. The corner gets to make up his mind whether he's going to trail that outside receiver or not. If, the outs if he sees an inside receiver making a quick out move, then he will stop. But in this case, he's, uh, he looked inside, and the inside receiver was going vertical too. So uh, he and the free safety both uh, were able to defend on that deep ball. Good play. Good work on the defensive secondary as the ball kind of had plenty of air under it. This time they run the jet sweep to Mintz. Mintz over on the left side, out to the 20, and finally caught from behind by Bryce Same. And then uh, Ian Brooks and company came up to help him out. But a uh, uh, pretty good play over here before we finally forced him out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. Yeah, he he's covering a lot of ground. He's getting yeah. positive yardage, and he, when he cuts up, uh, it, it doesn't look like he's making much yardage, but he's eating up ground and gaining ground every play. Uh, and he can run east and west as fast as uh, I'd say just about anybody in this conference. And uh, so he's outrunning us a lot to the edge and bringing up third down in about two. Yeah, he got shaken up on the play. He's over here on the sideline kind of uh, catching his breath a little bit uh, as we forced him out of bounds. Second, th check that third down on a couple. About seven minutes to play here in the third quarter. Braves now with a man in motion. Crow turns, hands off. It's going to be the big back. Isaiah Evans out of the backfield. Gets the first down across the 25 all the way to the 28-yard line. First down and 10, Braves. Yeah, they brought a wide receiver in there to pick, uh, put a pick block on the linebacker so he couldn't get over the top, and uh, it sealed us up in there pretty good. The corner has to come then, and he and the safety have to get to the line of scrimmage as quick as they can and make that play. So uh, that's a tough thing to defend against, and it's a – uh, it's it's legal blocking scheme, and it works. We, we ran a lot of that stuff over the years ourselves. First down and 10 now, 635 and counting. Still a one-point ball game as Crow lines up with the shotgun, fakes the handoff, throws on the run, and just a little too tall, and we pick it off. There's a diving grab over there. Couldn't tell if that was 15 or 16. Jesse Waldrup and Daniel Ammons over there on the coverage. There again, I'm pretty sure that was the kick coverage right there because you saw the corner turn the wide receiver loose to the safety and broke back to the football as it was thrown, and he ends up he's either going to make the tackle there on the catch because uh, they're just throwing it over the linebacker's head out there into that flat. And when they're in twins like that and you're kicking to that side, that means that if he makes that break uh, to the outside, you turn him loose and you pick that ball off. And that's exactly what happened. Outstanding work. Jesse Waldrup, 15 on the interception. Maroon Devils back in business at the 39-yard line. And here's a nice hole, but it's closed quickly at the 35-yard line after a gain of three. We, uh, again, knocked a good hole in there, but the Braves reacted as Damian Lossie and Ian and Brooks were trying to crash through that hole. Yeah, they're trying to take advantage of the fact that, that uh, Bryce has tried to run the ball wide enough on him right now. He's been handing it off to him to, to get their respect on the edge, and uh, they stopped Bryce with it earlier, so he pulls the ball this time and follows that pulling guard up in the seam there to to uh, try to pick up positive yardage. So now the Maroon Devils over to the right side. This time we're going to have Jesse Waldrup over here. Also with him is Hunter Call, who had a big touchdown reception earlier tonight. This time we hand off Bryce saying, good hole, up the middle, in the secondary, down to the 15-yard line. Coach, I thought he had that one busted. But again, probably the only guy that could catch him, as you were talking about, is Ty Mintz in the secondary. Yeah, and that's the same, it's the same play we just ran, same blocking scheme, only I'm pretty sure that uh, Coach Marr just said, all right, now give it to him this time and let him make a move up in there and he did so 
it, it works out. It, it, they can't defend both of them by, uh, at the line of scrimmage. they got to pick and choose how, who they're going to defend by the way we're blocking it. Outstanding work as the Maroon Devils line up in the shotgun again. It's going to be Lossie with Bryce Sane. He hands off to Bryce, runs to the right side, has a seam to the five touchdown. Maroon Devils take the lead at 522 to play in the third quarter. There we go. Saying it, there it is. That's the same exact play, one gap wider. All he did then was realize that they were trying to bring that linebacker down in that alley on the inside, and he just steps over the outside of it and, and pops it, breaks a tackle, and he's gone. Good read over there by Bryce Sane. As you mentioned, cut it inside on the play before. This time, cuts it outside. It gets six on the board, and we lead 19-14. And that, what I like about that was we had everybody up there blocked that time except the guy that they were looking at and reading. Uh, pulling guard this time, when he turned up, he picked that linebacker up, and everybody else was uh, was blocked. Here we go. We're going to go for two. Damian Lossie looking, looking, trying to throw. Plenty of room as he runs it in for the two-point conversion, and that's really big, Coach, because that makes up for the extra point we missed earlier. That's it. And 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 right now he is at, he is playing this game at a, at a much higher tempo than he's played all year. And, and yeah. if you notice, he is still playing on his feet. He's just not going down easy, and he's making it hard for them to tackle him. And uh, he's he's putting he's probably playing the best game I've seen him play, no matter what the outcome is going to be. Oh, coach, I totally agree. Good decision right there again. He just kind of dove in, and that's a big two point conversion. It makes it a twenty one to fourteen Maroon Devil lead with five twenty two to play. And again, uh, as we saw last week, to go back to that same old story, every. Every conversion, every extra point uh, looms large. Oh, yeah, it does. And, and now we're back up even with it and uh, with that the conversion there, that two-point conversion. And uh, Damien was trying to get the ball to the, to the tight end in the back of the end zone. And uh, uh, they got after him too quick, and he had to make a decision, and he made a good one there just to pull the ball down and keep running to the edge as fast as he could go and, and uh, get into the end zone. Good call by Damian Lossie and talking about calls. Number eight, Hunter Call ready to kick it off for the Maroon Devils here as the Braves line them up. Again, Ty Mintz is the deep man. And let's see what we can do here with our kickoff team. A whole lot of time left to play in this game, and we're back live on a Friday night. And this one is going to be kicked toward the sideline and out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. So Cherokee will get it in pretty good field position. But, Coach, you, you do that or you take the chance of getting it to uh, Ty Mintz, and that's a, that's a gamble. Yeah, and, and uh, the, uh, he has a prerogative of taking the ball right there or having him kick it over. So we'll see what uh, uh, having us kick it over. It looks like he's going to. He's going to take the ball on the or on the 35, I should say. 35 is a pretty good spot. Yeah, that's that's not bad. That's uh, <laughs> and uh, we're seeing that so much more uh, uh, at every level, high school, college. Uh, boy, these uh, these guys like to take it at the 35 when they can. But but uh, here we go. First down and 10. Braves with a football, three wide. Got a man in motion here, and they fake the jet sweep, hand it off on the counter, and there's Isaiah Evans. But this time the Maroon Devils good work up front with a good tackle in there by Big Nolan Brown. Yeah, Nolan did a great job playing off the double team right there, and, and he actually he actually played over the face of the guard that was blocking down on him. And they when they pulled the backside and brought him over the top, they went right by him. Of course, he was being blocked at that time, and he shed both of them and uh, and made the play at the almost. At the line of scrimmage. I tell you, Nolan's a he's a man, six foot two, three hundred pounder. He plays against double teams a lot. Yeah. I mean, they double team him just about every week. Here they go. Left side, and we got him in the backfield. He gets away. And uh, finally we knock him backwards. But the guy that really turned that play inside was Charlie Lambert and number twenty, Hunter Burrell. Yeah, we did a good job of attacking the football at the line of scrimmage right then. We you know it, we got to continue to do that, but at the same time, now uh, we can't be lulled into a, a, a running to the line of scrimmage. And as long as we're staying in this, in the in the three, uh, three and four man fronts, we're going to be okay with it. But uh, uh, right now is the time that Cherokee will pull it out. They're going to try to get to the wide side of the field or throw that screen back underneath again. That seems to be one of their go-to plays. Third down and nine. Now coming in, Chase Hughes in the middle, giving Nolan Brown a breather. And it's going to be uh, uh, Bobby Crow drops the football again, picks it up. He has pressure, rolls to the left side, gets away, throws it on the run. In a crowd, it's almost oh. picked off right through the hands of Colby Taylor, number 32. But, wow, that was uh, an ill-advised pass by Crow. Man, I tell you what, Colby wishes he had that one back because <laughs> oh, I think boy. it kind of surprised him when he turned around and the ball was falling right to him. He <laughs> He got his hands up and then he got both hands on the ball, but it just went right through him. 
It did. Bobby Crow again. He dropped the snap, picked it up, rolled to his left, but I think kind of a desperation pass. And yeah, there were a lot of white jerseys down there for the Maroon Devil secondary. Outstanding work by the guys up front to force Crow out of the pocket. And now they're going to have to punt it away with 3.56 to play third quarter. Again, Mintz back in punt formation. Bryce Sane back deep for the Maroon Devils, and Mintz has hit some pretty good ones. He hits this one toward the sideline and out of bounds again away from Bryce Sane. Yeah, but we're going to have it in pretty good shape up near the 27-yard line. First down and 10. Well, one guy's at the 27, one guy's at the 31. We'll see who uh, wins that argument. Now, the side judge is supposed to make that decision. <laughs> the back judge can't make that decision. He's running from the middle of the field that way. He can't make that call. He doesn't know where the ball crossed out of bounds. Right. He can't see that. He doesn't know where it went out. So I think they're going to go up here at the uh, 27, kind of splitting the difference. They've lost their minds. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I, I tell you, that's ridiculous. I mean, you can't run from the middle of the field and show me where a ball goes out of bounds when it's it, it's it. in the air. You, yeah, there's no way. You can't see where it crossed the out-of-bounds line, can you? No, there's no way, and I'm, I don't know why they're letting him get away with that. Damian Lossie in the shotgun will fake the handoff to Bryce Sane, and he's hit in the backfield but falls forward for two yards at the 30-yard line as our Maroon Devils are back in gear offensively here with 3.40 to play third quarter. Yeah, and uh, that time the defensive end was able to play both of them, uh, the running back and the quarterback. That's something you don't want to see happen, but he did. He, he uh, actually got his feet up under him, and, and once he saw Bryce didn't have the ball, he just committed himself back inside to uh, – to make the tackle on the quarterback. So now second down, our Maroon Devils need about, uh, we'll call it a long six, got to get out to the 37 for a first down. Out of the shotgun again with a couple of wides to the right side. Bryce Sane runs to the left side, and he's got some room over there. Turns the corner, has a first down. Forced out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Good call, but a flag is down. May make that oh, it, good run holding, back. Yeah, it's holding because that's right where it, they call it from, and uh, Bryce did a great job of one-on-one -on -one with that cornerback out there beating him, and and that's all for naught. So now we're going to bring it back, but, boy, Bryce really did a good job turning that corner and and uh, getting the first down. And but uh, we're, we're seeing some, some good execution tonight, Coach, but, but, again, both teams have had that penalty bite them at times. Yeah, that penalty bug, it's ugly, and, <laughs> and it uh, – and here we go backwards now, and uh, uh, we get a big play, get a first down, and it gets all, all of it gets called back and uh, and tacks on 10 more yards. 3.05 to play, third quarter, 21-14. Maroon Machine in the lead as we bring Twins out to the right side with strong side left. Got a wing over here on the right side as well against the Brave four-man front. And the handoff. Oh, it's dropped in the backfield. Damian picks it up, runs to the left side, makes something basically out of nothing, and gets back to the original line of scrimmage up near the 27. But, again, that's a, uh, that's a pretty good result out of a busted play. Yeah, he was trying to move too much with, before the ball got all the way to him. He was trying to make a move to, to fake the ball, and he just didn't get a good handle on it. And uh, That's something that will just have to get smoother as it goes. He's been doing a pretty good job out of the gun all night long with it. The only trouble he's had – it's been up underneath the center, so maybe that's just one one uh, little little problem. Here we go. Bryce on the right hip of Damian Lossy looks to the sideline for the play call. Looks like he's going to call the play at the line of scrimmage. Bryce moves to the left side. Twins on the right wide side of the field. Oh, we got a man moving. Ian Brooks moved too early. He went in motion out of that wing, and we'll back up five. Yeah, it's, that bug's really biting now. <laughs> and uh, it, it – uh, I'm not really sure because what uh, what Ian did was not a penalty. He was moving laterally, but unless another interior lineman moved, uh, uh, that's the only place there was a penalty. A, a back can move laterally at any point in time, and uh, it's not a penalty. So he hey. wasn't he wasn't moving towards the line of scrimmage, but who knows what they saw. Coach, uh, so far tonight, our Maroon Devils eight penalties, 60 yards. The Cherokee Braves eight penalties, 73 yards. So, so both teams have had a little had a little flag issue here tonight. And it's both it's been a drive stoppers for both teams. Yeah, yeah, they have really come at a tough times. So now our Maroon Devils third down and long. Lossie back to throw. Pump fakes looking. He's in traffic. He's got trouble, and he's going to be caught from behind at the 25 yard line. And now on fourth down and 12, we're going to have to punt it back to the Braves. Yeah, and. Uh, here again, it's, it's that old field position thing. We, uh, those penalties right there put us back in a hole there that we just we were having a hard time digging out of, and we didn't get enough back on the run there uh, 
Balossi to make it to make it uh, further upfield before we had to punt. You know, Hunter Call ran a little curl route up there, yeah. but again, he was kind of uh, in a lot of traffic and and uh, just almost the coverage kind of a sack. Coach couldn't find anybody open. Yeah, they were breaking open just as he got sacked, and uh, I think the uh, Cherokee's pressure that they put on him just uh, mounted too much. Big rush on the punt. Ty Mintz is going to see it bounce over his head. He's not going to try to run this back at the 37-yard line. First down and 10. Braves get it back with a minute 23 to play. But we're up by 7, 21 to 14. And we thank everybody for hanging in there with us tonight during our uh, false alarm emergency, uh, during some Internet problems. And, and I'll be honest, though, it just seems like just about every time we come to Cherokee, we can have an issue from time to time. It's just just the way it is. <laughs> well, this this was a first for me. I, yeah, this I, was. Yeah. This was. <laughs> yeah, first time we've been run out of a press box by, uh, for a, an alarm. Oh, that that was an interesting uh, scenario. They stopped play on the field, so luckily we got back and we're ready to go again. One twenty-three to play, third quarter. Here comes Isaiah Evans, left side, runs out there for about five yards before finally dragging him down. It's going to be uh, Jacob Langston on the hit. Yeah, Jake, Jacob had to fold back inside there to even get anything on him. Uh, that's one of those stop-and-go plays. He hands the ball to him, and you think he's going to uh, be running wide like he's been doing, and he doesn't. He sticks his foot in the ground and, and goes north and south, and uh, Jacob had to f actually fall back and tackle him uh, uh, not after a five-yard gain. Second down now. Braves need a long five. Just under a minute to play. Crow throws right side off the hands of Mintz, and it hit him right in the hands, and, and I think he started to run before he pulled it in, so it falls incomplete. Yeah, he was he was trying to break before the <laughs> ball ever got there. He, he had his feet turned up field, and uh, he just didn't get a handle on it. It popped right out. <laughs> oh, boy, wide receivers do that. And, and uh, uh, so a tough break for the Braves, but our Maroon Devils now are looking at trying to – Stop Cherokee again and get the ball back. Third down. Braves need five. This time they're going to bring Mintz over to the right side. Twins on the left side, which is the wide side of the field. Crow in the shotgun. Maroon Devils rushing three. Now got four on the rush. Oh, and the seam pass is going to be incomplete. Right over the head of Ian Brooks, who might have tipped it. They were trying to Ian, get it down there. But Ian got incomplete. a hand on it. That's the zone. That, that's that end cut where they've been just throwing the ball underneath, trying to get it in behind the linebackers and in front of the safeties back here. And this time, Ian had got a deep enough drop to where he couldn't throw it over his head this time. And instead of dropping down here uh, to the flat, Ian dropped straight back. And this time, the quarterback had to put a little more air under it to, to get to, uh, try to get it over his head, and he got a hand on it. Good play by Ian Brooks now as Ty Mintz will punt it back to the Maroon Devils, we think. Again, yeah. he's always that uh, dangerous to run. Yeah, he and especially he's lined up as, as shallow as he is. Oh, he booms this one as it's going to be Bryce all the way back at the 20. Calls for a fair catch, probably a good move. And we'll get the ball back here, Coach, late in the third quarter with a score 21-14. Yeah, well, this, uh, there again, that this particular time the field position didn't hurt us. We're right back pretty much where we started with it. And uh, uh, now if we can move the football and get it back out to midfield, uh, and, and start the fourth quarter with the ball around midfield. We're going to be uh, uh, we're going to be in the driver's seat for the rest of this ball game. Our Maroon Devils have played a good ball game here tonight. Defensively, pretty solid. Offensively, making some good things happen. Damian Lossy uh, doing an outstanding job. Ian on the wing on the right side, and we run over there behind Ian. Here comes Bryce Sane. Got us good blocking down the sideline. Nah, it's a foot gone. race. And no I don't think don't anybody's going to catch it. Don't throw a block. Nobody block anybody. <laughs> 80 That's yards. Was. Touchdown for Bryce Singh. The play that we've been wow. uh, trying to get to the edge all night long. He's had one big run out of it. This time he waited on those blockers, man. I, if we had to replay up, he, he geared it down <laughs> he did. until his he offensive did. lineman got in front of him. And once he threw that block, he made one cut and there was nobody. That's what happens when you're trying to play that many people up that close to the line of scrimmage. You break left level one and level two, then it's going to be a foot race with whoever's back there. And uh, he's going to win a lot of those foot races. He's got that kind of open field speed. Oh, no doubt. There was nobody back there mentioning like Ty Mintz who could potentially run him down because once he broke out here at the 45-yard line, there was nothing but green field in front of him. And our PAT game is having a tough time. That one is going to be short and no good. So we still lead 27 to 14 with 23 seconds to play here in the third quarter, fans. Stay tuned. We'll take a 30-second break down the line, and, and we'll be back right here on the Maroon Devils Network. 
Fans, welcome back. 23 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Maroon Devils with our biggest lead tonight, 27-14. to 14. And, Coach, we're doing it on the ground. 370 yards rushing. Bryce with 137 yards. Damian, 146 yards. And good decision-making. Yeah, and I, I was sitting up here talking about field position, and uh, uh, that didn't have anything to do with it. We're going to end up with wow. this football. We got it. There we is 47. Right there. Jacob Langston on the football. We <laughs> kicked it short. They touched it. We grabbed it. Maroon Devil ball at the 39 of Cherokee. That, that, that's amazing. Wow. Uh, he, he pooched that ball. That's a gutsy call. That is a gutsy call by the Swain coaching staff. My hat goes off to him. Man, that, that, that took a – that took a lot of uh, moxie. That's a, I'm going to use a nice word. That took a lot of <laughs> moxie right there to, to 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 squib that ball like that and us run and get on it. And, and here we are. I was talking about field position. We score. Now we've got the ball again inside their 40-yard line. Man. Talk about momentum. Maroon Devils have it right now with Damian Lossie uh, handing off to Bryce Sam. But, boy, their defense is mad. And coming in there with a big charge into our backfield is going to be uh, – uh, Damian Blanton with a big tackle. Yeah, they they were coming off that edge hard. But notoriously, uh, when you get Cherokee in a bind, their answer is to blitz. So every down, you got to know that's happening. You got to know that they're going to be coming off. Uh, they're sending those linebackers yep. repetitively. They're not going to uh, they're not going to slow down until you stop them. And uh, that's the end of the four, third quarter, fans. Twelve more minutes to go. Our Maroon Devils with the football and a 13-point lead, 27-14. to We'll be back in 30 seconds here on the Maroon Devils Network. Back live on the Maroon Devils Network, Friday night football here on the Cherokee Reservation at Ray Kensland Stadium. And the Maroon Devils on top, 27-14 to here. Big conference game and big momentum, Coach, after we got that kick, after scoring the touchdown, and now we're inside Cherokee territory. Yeah, it's going to be second and about 12 or a long 12, uh, maybe closer to 13. And it's uh, uh, we don't like we don't want to be in this position too many times, but they're going to try to get to try to get positive yards. All we've got to do now is, is clock uh, maintenance and uh, hang on to the football and try to put another one in. Well, I tell you, Cherokee now with about seven guys up in the box or more as uh, we try to. Run it to the right side, out to the 40-yard line. We got two or three yards, and that's about it as Cherokee converges in a hurry on Ian Brooks, and he gets up limping a little bit. Hope he's okay. Yeah, he took. I think he got his ankles twisted up there when they arm tackled him to the ground. But, uh, uh, you know, right here's a situation where you, you don't want to start trying to air the ball out, but it's third and ten. Uh, you're in between a rock and a hard place. Uh, you want to see the clock running, but you still got a whole quarter to play, and, and we still got that extra point looming over our, over our heads. So uh, uh, nobody's leaving. Nobody's getting up out of their seats and walking out yet. <laughs> so this thing is still up for grabs, although we're up by uh, one point short of two scores. So right now, I was looking over there on the sideline, and we haven't seen Connor McCoy back in the ball game. We hope Connor is going to be okay as we look down the road next week as we go to Andrews. But right here tonight, Damian Lossie running go. up the gut, a big play and a big first down inside ball. the 30-yard line oh, all the way to the 21-yard line before Ty Mintz made a touchdown-saving tackle. Now, we, we talked about their running backs being hard to tackle. That young man been hard to tackle he tonight. Has. Damian is absolutely putting on a, a running back show from the quarterback position. Uh, and there again, uh, they set the whole thing up and blocked it for him just exactly the way they blocked it for Bryce earlier only this time he pulls the ball follows that guard up in there and and he's making them pay and that's a first down man and and uh, we keep getting those and eating this clock up then uh, it's going to put Cherokee in a very desperate situation where they're going to have to count on big plays to beat us. Oh, no doubt. Damian now with around 160 yards rushing on the ground tonight. 10.35 to play in the ball game. And here we go to the left side. Good block up front. There's a nice run by Bryce Sane. But a good uh, block in there to kind of spring him. Mm -hmm. uh, good work in there by Chase Hughes, the right guard. Yeah, blocking at the line of scrimmage is, is picking up right now for us. And, and we've got to keep that happening. And there again, uh, if you're watching on the uh, the, the – uh, Broadcast, uh, this is a point right here where you'll see Cherokee sell out. You will see them bring linebackers uh, running to the line of scrimmage uh, before the ball snapped. They're not going to give much ground right here. They're going to try to attack it, try to make something happen. You're right, almost everybody, but uh, one or two guys up in the box as we run to the right side down near the 15-yard line. It's going to bring up a third down at about three, Coach, depending on where they spot the ball. Right, and, uh, and there again, uh, this, the clock continues to run, uh, but uh, 
with nine minutes, uh, nine and a half minutes left to go. That's still a lot of time, and we got to, we've got to, if, if we need to clock up and put this one in, then Cherokee's going to have their work cut out for them. Oh, no doubt with a score here. The pressure would be on the Braves. This time we have twins make. on the left side. Only yep. one guy over here. If the quarterback can recognize that with uh, si the situation here. We run to the left side. It's going to be Bryce Sane as he's, he's hit. Loose. Bounces he's off loose. at the 10. Down to the 7-yard <laughs> line. Bryce Sane with a great That'll second boy. Effort. Very close to a first down. Yeah, he'd been watching Damien now, but he didn't come off his feet after that first tackle. He, he kept his feet moving, broke that tackle. Uh, this is good to see. This is a... Uh, this is a major step forward, I and mean, we we get this one in, boys. It's uh, uh it's it's going to be interesting what Cherokee has is going to try to do to to come back in this one. Oh no doubt, I couldn't believe, coach. We had two receivers open over here and one defender, and we're going to see they're it up on the again. high side they're, as they're, well. They're, they're selling out. They're going to cheat that way. That free safety's not the least bit concerned. He wants to be in on this tackle and at the line of scrimmage. There's Damian Lossie trying to run up the gut. Uh, no gain on that play. It's going to bring up second and seven. Second and goal to go from the seven-yard line. But again, twice now we've seen uh, a receiver free on either side. Yeah, and they're, uh, they're, they're, they're banking on we're not going to throw the football out there in this, in this situation, and, and uh, it, so be it. But at the same time, the clock's running, and uh, – that free safety is just kind of uh, lollygagging out there and getting in just a stiff distance out there to where he might be able to break on the ball. But now they're going to yep, play a little they, different. Now they cover us on both receivers. Bryce tries to kick it outside. Has room at the five. Run. Inside to the three-yard line is Bryce saying he almost broke another one, but they, they ran him down before he got to the uh, end zone. Yeah, and then uh, this should bring up third down right here. And uh, – it's manageable. It's manageable right. within two two snaps of the football to get this ball in. But uh, and now you really will see Cherokee's defense sell out because <laughs> they're. Uh, I'm, I'll be surprised if they just let, if we line a wide receiver up there. They just don't leave him standing out there third by down, himself. Yep, third down to go from the three yard line. Maroon Devils look to the sideline for the play call from. Offensive coordinator Jeff Marr, eight minutes to play in the ball game. Twins, one wide receiver wide to the right side, single coverage on the split backs behind Damian. Hands off uh, just outside the right of the center, and but he's hit and stopped short, got down to about the one and a half. Yeah, it's going to be close on this fourth down play to see if we can uh, punch this in. And, and uh, there again, it's just going to be mano a mano, and I, I could – I pretty much see the same thing happening as happened earlier in the ball game. Uh, instead of running a veer look, I'd say we'll wedge block this thing and try to get Damien to push, just push it right on over the top. But now Cherokee's going to be bringing, bringing the thunder from the other side, and we'll see what happens on fourth down. So fourth down and goal to go from the one-yard line. 7-18 to play. Clock running. Maroon Devils up 27-14. to A score here would all but put it out of reach for Cherokee. And we're going to call a timeout, let the clock run down. And that's what we do as the play clock winds down and we use the timeout. 7.06 to go here, Coach. And again, now the clock is an enemy of the Cherokee Braves. And, and we can really use good clock management here if we can punch this in. And then uh, Maroon Devils are sitting pretty. Yeah, we, uh, the, the, the key to it is, is is that if we could punch this one in right here, I think some of the air is going to go out of out of the balloon for uh, Cherokee, and, and uh, they'll have to depend on nothing but big plays. Now, that's not to say that they don't have the people to oh, do it with. We've seen it. them. They can do it. Uh, but uh, if, if you get your mindset wrapped around that, then you can kind of keep some of it from happening. So now with the timeout, we'd like to remind everybody coming up next week, we're going to be at Andrews. We'll see some old friends over there as we take on the Wildcats. Two weeks from tonight, we're going to be home with – Rosman, talk about felines. We'll have the Tigers come to town. And then on October 19, as is always, we always think it's the biggest game of the year. Of course, tonight this is the biggest game. But, but October 19, we go to Murphy to take on those Murphy Bulldogs. And then the week after that, Robbinsville will be at Swain County Memorial Stadium. So a lot of big games coming up. Yeah, and it's uh, the, everybody's playing playing tonight to get themselves situated for the stretch. And, That's uh, it. Uh, that's why this game is so important to both these teams. Now you see Cherokee loading up with an eight-man front. They have nobody left back there, and Damien goes in. And yeah, let's see if he got across Come the goal on. line. There's a signal. Yeah. Touchdown. He was in. I don't know what they were waiting on. You, <laughs> and I, if he can see the ball go out of bounds from the middle of the field, surely to goodness he could see it across that line with the football. Oh, no question. Touchdown, Maroon Devils making it 27-14. 
And let's see if we line up and go for two. We've had trouble with our kicking game tonight as we missed a couple of extra points and yeah, also a field goal try. Yeah, you got to. I, I used to keep one of those little cards in my pocket that told you if you were down by this many or ahead by this many and uh, in the fourth quarter and you've missed an extra point, and it would tell you pretty much what to do. And I never, the thing never lied to me. It always works. So. Uh, the, the, the numbers don't lie, do they? Nope. Here we're going to go. Going to go for two. Damian rolling to the right side, looking in the end zone, firing in the end zone, complete. Got it. And it's going to be complete there we go. in the back of the end zone. That was a well-executed <laughs> two-point conversion. Man, that, I tell you what, it, it, it's people can in, in our community can, can say what they want to. This team has improved, I'm telling you. They have improved and they Yes, are, they have. Uh, that's execution right there. That's execution by offensive linemen. We didn't get sacked. Damian rolls out there, finds his receiver back there at the flag in the corner of the end zone, hits him right in the hand. Receiver catches it, keeps his feet in bounds. Uh, that comes from practice. That's not something that the kids are born doing. And uh, uh, they, these kids have been working on this stuff. These players have worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. Uh, they want to. They want to be respectable. They want to be feared. And uh, uh, that's what they're trying to accomplish out here tonight. Good execution as Jesse Waldrup was literally on the back line of the end zone back there near that checkerboard look, if you will, in the Braves end zone. And, and just a good pass from Damian Lossie to find him right in the corner back there near the pylon. And that's a big two. It's now 35-14 Maroon Devils. Yeah, it's, this is the first time we've had this kind of comfortable lead all year long. Now, I say comfortable, yes. but there again, there's seven minutes left in this thing. And uh, uh, Cherokee's got the kind of players out there that uh, – uh, they want to make this. They want to get back in this thing. They're going to try to make something happen, uh, just like uh, just like what our kids do. Talking about Damian Lossie, 24 carries, 165 yards, two touchdowns, averaging seven yards a carry. Coach. Well, it doesn't get much better than that. I, I'm just <laughs> really glad to see him. Uh, that, that Coach Marr and Coach Blankenship have have kind of put him back there in that. Uh, pistol set and let him use his legs to try to help them win football games. Couldn't do it at the first of the year. They're just trying to teach him the offense. And we kick it short. They're going to return it back out to the 35-yard line, but pretty good coverage down there by our kick team. So now the Braves will have it with a lot of pressure to make something happen in a hurry. Yeah, that, and uh, Coach Briggs, he's not going to be patient. He, he will. No. Uh, he's going to put the ball in the hands of that running back and throw the ball all over the field here in just a little bit. And if uh, he doesn't have any success running it, he's going he's to try to get the ball to the wide side of the field and try to get to, uh, get Evans up in the line of scrimmage as soon as possible so that he can make those cuts that he can make and use his speed and his strength to, to, to try to get back up on the scoreboard and, and try to get closer in this thing. Oh, no question now. It's going to be Crow back in the shotgun. He lines Mintz over here on the right side. He's going to be his go-to target. On the other side is going to be 15, Blake Smith. Those are the two favorite receivers for quarterback Bobby Crow, the junior. He turns, looks, got a receiver screen over here with Mintz. He breaks out to the 45, 50. There it is. He's in the He's secondary, gone. and there he goes, and I'm not sure we're going to catch him as he scores on the very first play, and that's going to be a 60 Four-yard touchdown. Yeah, they they, they struck wow. right now, and uh, uh, see, and, and that's not an upfield throw. He threw that ball uh, behind right the line of scrimmage, yep. and he catches it, and he gets going upfield, and uh, um, that's all it takes. And he's out here to the wide side of the field. You got three defenders; one of them's blocked, and the other two miss him. And a good block over there by his receiver right beside him. That's Michael uh, uh, again, Bernheisel, who also sprung a block, but again. Good speed over there. He's kind of like the Bryce Sane for the Maroon Devils. Once he gets in open territory, yeah. not many people are going to catch him. No, he just uh, he made one move there, and and two of us missed him, and uh, uh, and that that uh, that caused a problem. So now Crow is going to be the holder with 6:44 to play, and as you mentioned, Coach, they they wasted no time in putting six on the board, and we blocked the extra point. Coming in there, there's another guy. Is that uh, that's going to be Charlie Lambert again? That's the second block kick. In two yeah, weeks. In, in two weeks. And so here, here we go again. Here's that scenario. Uh, and and the big thing we got to do now with, with six minutes and 44 seconds left to go, they, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a such thing as, as – uh, uh, and I've heard people talk about this. I never believed in it. But when people score like that, now they kick the ball back to you. You're in control of the clock again. Right, and if right. you can move the football, pick up first downs. Uh, but now I, don't, I never, I never cottoned much to that philosophy about uh, 
people scoring quick, and so they have to give you the ball back. But uh, you and I were talking during the break about the veer teams. Uh, there's some veer teams out there that like that kind of thing. Oh yeah, they, they don't mind for you to go ahead and score if you if they've got the lead because you've got to get the ball back to them. And as Coach Burrell said, you may not see the football again the rest of the game. That's exactly so. right. Ball control. Yeah. We got a lot of guys up on the uh, line of scrimmage here on the kickoff. We kind of expect Cherokee to kick it short, hoping they may get it back with 644 to play, potentially even an onside kick. Yeah, he's lined up kind of weird to it, and I'd yeah. say that's maybe what they attempt yep. to do. Oh, it bounced off right. our hands, but we pick it up. Good running and running big. to the right side. It's going to be there Robert go. Green. Robert Hang Green. On. All the way back yeah. to the 42-yard line, pretty good, pretty good play. There we go, and I, that's just a, that's kids playing football right there. Yeah, you know, you, you, normally you coach a kid right there that he gets that ball get to the ground. He just he realized where he was at with it, and when he picked it up, I mean, I thought, he just took off. And when he took off, he realized there was some grass out there. Get in it and run, and he did. He and ran, hung on to the football. Ran to the wide side. Did a good job. Robert Green with the Maroon Devils now first and 10 at the Cherokee 42 as they get their final player on the field. 6.42 to play here in the ball game. Can we score again? Can we punch another one in? Bryce Sane and Lossie uh, avoiding tackles in the backfield and get Stay a couple of yards. But, boy, go. Cherokee was in our backfield with that blitz all the way. Yeah, they're going to blitz every, pretty much every down from here on out. They, they have to try to make something happen in the backfield, try to cause a turnover, uh, try to make our offensive linemen jump there or hold them. Uh, there's a number of things, but uh, they're, they're going to do everything they can in the center between the tackles uh, to – disrupt any type of running game we have. And, and a lot of times that just comes down to uh, where a player lines up. He'll line up in one place and stunt into a gap to either side of, a, of an offensive lineman in it, and he breaks he breaks free through there. And, again, we got a receiver uncovered over here on the slot on the left side, and it's going to be Lossie running to the left side. He has some room, and it's going to be caught from behind and knocked down at the 32-yard line. Yeah, he, and good, good tackle down there by uh, Aiden Evans. Yeah, it's going to be close to the first down right here. Let's see what they – if I'm looking, my eyes Very are close. right. Yeah, it's going to be pretty close. They may, they may measure this one. We'll see. It's definitely close enough to measure, Coach. I mean, yeah. it's right on the 32. They're going to call it a first down. Okay. We get the That's break all right, there. too. They don't have to measure That's that one then. <laughs> See? That's it. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all for them not measuring that one now, dear. I'm going to shut up about that. Well, I tell you, the Cherokee fans, some of those heading for the exits here with 547 to play. You see the uh, – uh, the car lights start to turn on and the Big Cove roads start to get busy here. But this game is not over yet. No, it, uh, there's still five and a half minutes left to go. And uh, right now, it's just a matter of us controlling the football. And uh, we got to pick up first downs. There comes the blitz yep. again. And, and uh, Well, Bryce Sane is in trouble as yeah. Lossie got it to him. But uh, we still lost uh, uh, two yards. There's a very late penalty flag coming in, though. Yeah, I don't know what this is going to be. I, it's, it happened out there on the edge. It may have been a little extracurricular activity. As, yeah, it was as very it, late. As it happened, yeah, it was after the whistle was actually blown. So we'll we'll see when we get the uh, face, face mask. mask. Oh, wow. that, that's big. That is. Yeah. That's an automatic first down, I would think. Yeah, we'll, we'll see right here because that's a. Yeah, depending on where they spot the football, it should be down inside around the 20-yard line. We'll see if it's enough for – oh, there's, there's another, another flag. Late flag. Yep. There's yep. a lot of tempers flaring out there on the Cherokee side. And yep, they're A lot mad. of mouthing going on, and uh, yep. uh, they're losing their composure now. It wasn't supposed to happen to them, and it's happening. It's happening, and you're right. Uh, there's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Now that he's going to be ejected, I think. Uh, I know they were talking to 36, and that's going to be one of their middle linebackers over there, Damian Blanton, uh, senior linebacker, and – he is leaving the field. Yeah, he's an official's coming over, and that's probably going to be an ejection. Uh, he probably said something to an official. That's about the only way they'd do that. And yeah. if, if he ejects him, that means a young man can't play next week. That's it. And no. that's, you know, you try to talk to players about that, but uh, uh, right now they're feeling the frustration because uh, uh, they they just um, they didn't feel like this was going to happen to them, and, uh, and they are. They're very frustrated. So it is unsportsmanlike conduct mm -hmm. against the Braves and the ejection, ejection. Yep. on 36. And, again, a, a tough break over there for Damian Blanton. And the Maroon Devils will reap the rewards of that with an automatic first down. Yeah, and there'll be uh, – uh, Coach Briggs is not going to be a bit happy about that. And uh, no. uh, losing players due to that kind of thing, it just uh, – it's a killer. It's a killer for your, uh, your season, your program, and uh, – uh, 
Oh, this ball is going to wind up all the way down at the 15-yard line now. First down for our Maroon Devils with 5.22 to play, Coach. And I think they've kind of got everything sorted out. Now let's see if we can get back to live action with still 5.22 to go. Yeah, the, the official has to uh, uh, tell both coaches um, what's going on when an ejection happens. And now he's bringing the captains up to the uh, – captain from each team up to the line of scrimmage, talk to them about the uh, behavior on the field and, and sportsmanship and uh, and trying to get this ball game uh, completed That's without it. any more instance like that. That's it. Get that under control. And, yeah. And uh, he says, run the clock, and we're ready to go here, and we still have 20 seconds on the play clock, so we're in no hurry to run up to the line of scrimmage, but here we go. Yeah, he got uh, – now you'll see Cherokee going to gonna split the middle of the defense and run a shaded 50. And run, we're running the power game right up in that bubble. That's called a bubble up in there between those tackles. And there's a little bit more extracurricular yep. activity. And yep. Cherokee's not getting the message. You know, and uh, and that's time mints. Yeah, there may be more ejections before this thing's over with. So uh, it's going to be a, a nice run by Damian Lossie, though, as he ran down that right hash mark. And they're going to spot it inside the 10, uh, just inside the 10-yard line, second down, and we're going to need about four and a half. Yeah, I think Mintz took himself out of the game. I think he felt like that uh, he was about to lose his composure. He didn't – Yeah. Uh, they didn't substitute for him until after he was already off the field. So, I think it was one of those situations. He just didn't want to stay out there and get himself ejected and uh, end up not being able to play next yeah. week. Well, he was right there on the verge of, of that happening. Second down. This time we run to the left side. Bryce saying not much room. And we get a yard or two, and that's going to be all third down coming up now. But, again, uh, now Cherokee might have an injured player down as they're going to bring their trainers on to uh, uh, try to help him out as well. Yeah, it looks like he's got a, he's holding his knee. There was a lot of bodies flying around in there on the line of scrimmage, and he might have got he might have got his uh, legs taken out from under him there. And that injured player for the Cherokee Braves, by the way, is going to be uh, looks like number 52. That is Seth Smith, one of their senior inside linebackers as they attend to him. We're going to take a break with 419 to play, and the Maroon Devils up right now 35-20. Stay with us here on the Maroon Devils Network. Fans, welcome back here with 407 to play. Our Maroon Devils now looking at third down. We need three to keep this drive alive just outside the seven-yard line. And here we go, running back inside and Damian. scoring. Damian Lossie got up there. <laughs> he ran into a jam, and he cut back inside and scored. I'm telling you, this that young man has come leaps and bounds. That is, yeah. he, he, This is getting scary now. I'm telling you what, he's feeling it. And he's feeling it at a time this team really needs it, and the whole team's feeling it. They're feeding off of his what he's doing out here, and uh, that'll make offensive linemen work harder. That'll make running backs work harder. That he is he's uh, taking this this team on his shoulders here, and he's he's got it putting on a show tonight now. Damian Lossie, 28 carries, 188 yards rushing, 6.7 a carry. Three touchdowns. That's a good night in anybody's book. Yeah, he, he was he was supposed to run a follow play there and behind the running back, and when it got jammed up, he just found his way out of there. Oh, Threw Cherokee off. jumping offside here yep. on the two point conversion. Did that crazy count and pulled him off, <laughs> and uh, that'll get us a that'll get us a half a distance to the goal line closer. And now the. Uh, now a lot of fans are heading for the exits here, Coach, with 3.54 to play. Our Maroon Devils up 41-20. to 20. Yeah, it's getting a little empty over here on the Cherokee side now. Yes, it, it is. The faithful are still here, but uh, not many Maroon Devil people have left. They're still over there. They're, they're wanting to see this thing through to the end. That's it. They're seeing some – some really good football here tonight. Hand off right side. It's going to be Bryce Sane. Pops it outside, and he He's goes in. in for two. And that's just good work from Bryce. Yeah, it's off tackle play, and, and uh, Cherokee played it off the edge real well. He split the defenders and put a spin move on them there and uh, put himself right in the end zone. So now we take a break. 3.54 to go. Our Maroon Devils in control, 43-20. to 20. We'll be back right here on the Maroon Devils Network. Back live on a Friday night here. This one not over, but the Maroon Devils have all but put the finishing touches on this uh, particular win tonight, Coach, as we kick it back to the Braves. But, hey, we know they're capable of, of scoring on just about any play as we angle it toward the sideline. They're going to take it at the 35, try to run it back. But we use the sideline as that extra player and force them out of bounds. Yeah, and uh, it was a good, uh, good idea to make sure you don't kick that ball back there to Mintz uh, to yeah. where he has a chance to break this thing open. He's, he's brought himself back in the game now to uh, uh, to play on offense, but uh, 
this this is big right now. I, I'll tell you what. I don't think that there's enough time. I don't really think there is uh, short of a miracle. Uh, but we can't let them score in one play. That's uh, right. We can't just let them keep scoring and kicking back to us. Uh, you, can't, you don't want to get in that kind of ball game. So, uh, But uh, this is a stand-up moment uh, for the Maroon Devils right here. It really is. 3.49 to play. We saw them score on one play last time they had the ball as they threw it out to Mitz on kind of a wide receiver screen over here on the sideline. And they're looking this way again. And this time yeah. Crow is going to be sacked to the backfield. He had no time at all as we there, had a lot of guys There's back your there. rocket blitz again. Coach Blankenship timed it perfect, called it at the perfect time. Don't give him a chance to get his feet set back there. And he came off that edge out there. Uh, and and uh, that ace player did and ran it just exactly the way you draw it up. Uh, he he was under control when he got to the line of scrimmage, and then he saw what was happening and turned the Jets on. That's big. That's big. Thomas Allen. Running. Yeah. We had Charlie Lambert in there and yeah. Jacob Langston all in the backfield. Yeah, that was that was an excellent uh, defensive call. Second, going to run an inside blitz this time. Second down, throws it, and uh, catchable ball, but Bernheisel couldn't come down with it a little high, and it's going to be incomplete. Third down now, and again, Alex Ben coming up over there uh, as he's now in for the Cherokee Braves. So, again, they have changed quarterbacks at number 12. Alex Ben is a senior, six foot, 190 pounder as Bobby Crow looks like is going to be through for the night as he's over here on the sideline for the Braves. Yeah, he's uh, probably letting his other quarterback get some get some reps now uh, and try to keep him uh, keep him in the, in the ball game and, and see what he can do. So now he's in the shotgun as well on third down and long. Here comes pressure, steps up, fires down the middle, got his man, and it's a huge first down for the Braves. They break a tackle, and finally we get him down at the 43-yard line. But to give that quarterback, again, Alex Ben some credit, he stood in there, took the hit, yeah. and delivered a good pass. Yeah, he didn't He didn't back up. He came right up in it and turned the ball and threw a great ball yeah. down through there. I don't know how that – I didn't, wasn't watching the routes, and I don't know how he got that wide open, but uh, – uh, there was a lot of receivers out there running around, and he just found a soft spot in the middle. And there again, it was uh, uh, kind of in front of uh, our safeties when he caught the football. So now they have an injured player down with 2.57 to play and a 43-20 to 20 lead. The uh, Braves, we've had a, a couple of injuries for either team. And again, this is the uh, same young man that was hurt a little bit earlier. We're talking about Seth Smith, number 52. They're working on him. Uh, uh, can't tell if it's a cramp or something. But one thing, we know Connor McCoy never did come back. He was injured early in the ball game, Coach, and I hope he's going to be okay and yeah. he'll be able to play next week. Yeah, that's, it, that, that was a, a fluke thing, and we'll see what happens uh, through the course of the week. And they start rehabbing him uh, and uh, get him get him some uh, – uh, get him some ice on that thing and get it working out. And if it's an ankle, it, it's one of those things that you just don't come, you just don't bounce back from those kind of things. So uh, it may take a while. We see Connor over on the far sideline in front of the Maroon Devil fans uh, on crutches and looks like his left leg in some kind of a, uh, maybe a temporary uh, uh, splint or cast, if you will. But we hope he's going to be okay and we'll be able to play next Friday when we go to Andrews. And right now with 2.57 to play, we're getting ready to go. Braves back on the field, and they have a first down and 10. Again, their uh, number two quarterback, Alex Ben, delivered a strike a moment ago with a big first down play. And let's see what our Maroon Devils can do now with basically the wolf front up there, three-man front, four linebackers right behind them, and here we go. Four wide for the Braves. Ben back to throw again. Fires down the middle. Got his, got his man. man. And there's another first down at our 32-yard line. Yeah, he just finding the soft spots underneath. Uh, th this is a point in time right here where you, you, you tell your linebackers, get depth, just open up straight back. Don't even turn your shoulders. Open just straight back and make them have to throw the ball out towards the boundary somewhere. That's Josie Lossy on the uh, receiving end for the Braves. That's enough for a first down at our 31-yard line. 242 and counting with a 43-20 to 20 lead. Our Maroon Devil fans hanging in there, and our Maroon Devil players got to be feeling good, but again, got to keep playing right down to the wire. Back to throw again. Braves fire left side. Got a man out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Again, Alex Ben not afraid to throw it. Well, great arm. He, yeah. he, that's strong. That was a strong throw right there. Every throw he's made has been pretty much on the money, and, and that was a strong throw to an outcut uh, over there for an eight-yard gain. And uh, uh, he just he zipped that ball. 
He's a strong kid, six feet, 190 pounder. And again, Alex Ben coming in relief. He is the senior and the backup to junior Bobby Crow. So now, second down, and they just need a couple of yards with 226 left to play here tonight. Braves line them up with this time four wide receivers, and they have trouble with a snap. And a penalty flag is down. Alex goes down as well after he picks it up, tried to run. There again, Jacob Langston there, but a penalty flag down, and there was some mix-up on the offensive front. Yeah, there was a one of the receive, wide receivers was walking towards the line of scrimmage, looking back uh, towards the, the running back and having a conversation with him when the ball was snapped. So it should be an illegal motion, but they're giving Coach Blankenship the option of, of uh, uh, the penalty or the play. So. So they're going to back up five, or it could be a third down and short with 2.21 to play. and no. They're going to no. mark it off, I think. No, they're not either. It is going to be a decline. It's going to bring up yeah, third down. So he declines it, and uh, uh, we took the loss. they took the loss on that, and it'll start the clock. That's why Coach Blankenship uh, refused the penalty. Third down and four. Alex back to throw again. Touchdown. Fires toward the end zone. Got yeah. it. Touchdown. In the end zone is going to be Michael Bernheiser. And, again, that was another strike from Alex Bent. Yeah, we had two safeties trying to break to uh, the same side of the field. Then, and uh, they, somebody really messed that up. I'm not exactly sure who. But they were trying to uh, play that kick coverage. And uh, he came in behind both of them and was running wide open. You can see that's going to be a touchdown as soon as the, the quarterback threw it. So now with 2.12 to play, we've seen some some really good throws from backup quarterback Alex Ben. They get down the field and punch it in, and they're going to line up and go for two as well. So let's see. Is they're going to bring out four wide, two on each side? Evans will stay in the backfield, a block for Alex Ben. Low snap, he picks it up. Here comes pressure, rolls to the right side. He's going to run it, and he bangs it into the end zone, and that's going to be the two-point conversion here. And with 2.12 to play, Coach, uh, uh, there's still football left, and looks like we've got a guy slow in getting up, but uh, he's trying to get back on his feet, and down there uh, shaking up is Chase Hughes, but he gets up, and he's going to walk off okay. Yeah, I think he collided with his own player there when he was trying to make that play and <clears throat> ended up uh, – that's sometimes the worst to hit you'll take is the two of you approaching from different angles and, and uh, hitting each other. 43-28, our score, 2-12 to go. Cherokee will try to kick it, or will they try to kick it onside uh, like they did a moment ago? So yeah, they'll, they'll have to bat onside this. They're going to try to find a way to get the football back quick, and uh, uh, they, 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 don't want, they don't want to consider themselves out of this thing yet. So. And if you look at it from just a totally – as Captain Spock would say, a logical speculation. It's a 15-point game, uh, a couple of scores, two extra point conversions, and crazy things can happen. Oh, but yeah. uh, let's hope it didn't happen that way. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's always interesting. I mean, like, there again, it's a Smoky Mountain Conference. He's, this is huge for both these teams. It is. Uh, both teams have played hard. Both teams have had big plays. Both teams have played pretty good on defense. And so it's just been one of those things. And uh, uh, both teams are trying to make things happen. Here they go. Rocky Peoples onside kick. There and again, go. there's uh, our Green, Robert Green, got on the football. This time he took a knee at the 45 yard line. We have it back in good condition. Yeah, he did, he did the smart thing that time, too. He just, it was a line drive to him, and he took it on the first hop and uh, went right to the ground with it. Did a great job. He's doing a good job out here on these, uh, on special teams on this. Uh, Return team. Oh, no doubt. Two two returns in a row. Getting it done now with 2.10 to play. Our Maroon Devils are going to try to milk the clock as much as we can. And let's see what we can do here. Lossie is going to be in the shotgun. And he's going to have a couple of wide receivers. And now Cherokee jumped offside. And that's going to give us a five-yard edge here. That'll help us make it first and five. Jumping off is one of their big linemen, Joshua Driver, at six feet, 290 pounds. And well, they do. They try to they try to get after you here. Yeah, that was a gap stunt. He was trying to run right there, and it, he was trying to get a, get it out, get off a little quicker than what the ball the snap was, and he, he was trying to anticipate it. And now they're going to try to do this do the same thing. They're running another gap stunt out of a out of a four man front. First down and five, Maroon Devils. Lossie will hand off to Sane around the right side, and they're going to meet him on the line of scrimmage and nowhere to go as they bring up a lot of folks, and and it's going to bring up. Second down and five now at midfield. Yeah, and, uh, and there again, this is about clock management, making right. it making it run. And uh, uh, I don't know how many timeouts Cherokee has left. 
Uh, but it doesn't look like right now that Coach Briggs wants to take one just to see what would happen. Uh, you never know, but uh, I think right now it's just a matter of we're going to let the clock run down to the last possible second and then run a play. So now second down and five coming up, 132 and Maybe, counting. I think he's going to let it run all the way down and call timeout. That and seems then, to be the plan. And then uh, it'll be a matter of taking knees. So there is the timeout, and it's going to be called by uh, by the Maroon Devils with 119 to play. Fans, stay tuned. We're going to take a break, 30 seconds down the line, and we'll come right back here on the Maroon Devils Network. Fans, welcome back. Looking at some of the total yardage here with a minute 19 left on the clock here at Cherokee. Our Maroon Devils, 434 yards total offense. The Cherokee Braves, 313. So, Coach, it's been one of those uh, – offensive games here tonight where a lot of things have happened since the uh, opening drive. Yeah, and they, these young men have had a lot of naysayers this year and the coaching yeah. staff. You know, yes. we all know this. I'm just being up front with everybody. What you're seeing is a culmination of these young men going to practice every day. Coach is not giving up. Players not giving up. And, uh, and, and, and they're out there playing together as a team and trying to make something happen good for themselves. This is a statement tonight. It is. It, it's a statement for the program. It's a statement for these players. And it's a statement for this coaching staff. So say what you want to. Say what you may. Here it is. It's in black and white. And uh, uh, you just have to, you'll have to accept it. Hey, that's it. Results speak a lot louder than words, don't they? Yeah, they do. And uh, I've been over there. I know. I wore that target on my back for a long time. I wore it proudly. I ain't ashamed of a bit of it. But uh, uh, folks are going to have to learn that uh, uh, this is not an easy thing. No, it's not. No, it's not. With a lot of young players, third down now, third down and nine, under 40 seconds to play. There's a knee on the snap. And I think we're. Uh, I think everybody's out of timeouts. And I think this ball game is just about over. And our Maroon Devils are going to feel good about themselves this weekend as they can – Enjoy this and get ready for practice on Monday. Yeah, we don't have to take another snap. The official That's did it. a smart thing there. He waited till the it was under 25 seconds and uh, and then started the clock. So it's that's the ball game. Now the players going to shake hands and again, coach. Uh, we're going to be on the road next week at Andrews on the road again as we go over there and, and uh, see our old friend Mr. Phillips and see if we can uh, come up with another win. But this is. Uh, in my mind, by far, our best effort from an execution standpoint and getting it done all season long. Yeah, this was a statement win for the, for the program right here. I mean, it, uh, you you look back at the Smoky Mountain game, uh -huh. uh, taking it on the chin last week, the struggles we had, and and tonight uh, there was a there was a different fire in their belly. And uh, uh, it, what causes that? Who knows? If I knew the answer to that, I could write a book and we'd all be millionaires. Oh boy! But what happens is, is once it catches fire. Uh, and, and you can keep it burning, and you can keep it going with these players. Uh, they get to live with this all week long. But now next week, they, they got to get themselves ready again. But nobody can take this one away from them. They can't, right. it's, it's in the books. It's done. And uh, one thing that I, I like to see, Coach, is the, the players out there, uh, even though there were some, there was some uh, pretty brutal football out there tonight, and there were some personal fouls that we're all seeing the coaches and the players uh, kind of put that behind them and, and shake hands. And, and uh, hey, they'll uh, come back next week. Both teams will. And I think both teams will come back better teams next Friday night. Well, yeah, and, and there again, Cherokee's ex expectations are just like anybody else's. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, they came out here. They're the defending uh, 1A champions. So, That's right. So, uh, they're, they're – pride's on the line too you can't make it every year that way you can't make it every game that way and things have to develop and uh, uh we've seen a whole lot of development with our pro with our players and and uh, just look at the quarterback and look at the running back play the line of scrimmage play tonight it's i mean better. they had their hands full did they win every every battle no but they won the war that's, and that's what really counts. Fans, that's going to wrap it up here tonight. We've had an interesting night. We've had evacuation of the press box. We've had uh, uh, lots of big plays. We've had lots of physical football. Well, when it's all said and done, I'm Run Devils with a win, 43-28 to over the Braves. Join us next Friday as we'll be live from Andrews High School right here on the Maroon Devils Network.